School. It's CCX coverage of high school football. Hi, welcome everybody along with Ryan Iverson. I'm Joe Molina. Tonight it's the final regular season game of 2017 with the Trojans from Wyzetta hosting the Crimson from Maple Grove. And Ryan, tonight it's a great rivalry matchup, but a different feel than the last couple years. Neither one of these teams are really contending for what would be a state championship. A lot of the times these two teams flirt for that kind of contention. This year, both teams still looking for their first division win. Yeah, and they're perennial powers, like you said, Joe, but they play in a really tough schedule, having to go through Eden Prairie, Edina, Minnetonka, all of, you know top three teams. So I think both teams are very solid. They're still very good, but they're just they've, they've lost some key seniors from last year and they're just not quite at that top tier but great facility great rivalry these kids know each other the fan bases know each other so anytime you get those two kind of components together it's going to be a heck of a football game for maple grove as a team they've been right there in some of those close games had a close one against edina fell off a little bit at the end but a, a win here tonight would help gain some confidence going to the playoffs and they, they might not be the one pick to come out of their division or come out here on top or end up at U.S. Bank Stadium, but they are a plucky team that thinks they might have a chance. Well, they're a team, Joe, that no one's going to want to see in the playoffs. They play hard, they're physical, they got skill, and they're very well coached. Coach Lombardi has been, you know, a longtime assistant at YZ, had great success on his own at Maple Grove. They're just fundamentally sound. Uh, their three losses have been to really good football teams, Minnetonka, Edina, and Eden Prairie. So that's, they've run through the gauntlet. They're not going to be scared to play anyone in the, once the playoffs start, having gone through that kind of uh, scheduling. So they, you want to get this last win. You want to get that positive momentum going into the playoffs before it starts. So that's why this game is going to be really important. And, of course, last year they were led by a three-year starter, a quarterback, and Brad Davidson. He has since moved on. But now they started off with a ground game. That's kind of where they recovered this year. Now they have a 1,000-yard rusher in Evan Hall. Yeah, over 1,100 yards, eight touchdowns. He's just he's quick, but he's strong. Watching him warm up, he's just a thick, well-built kid, and he doesn't – very rarely will you see the first tackler get him down. wyzetta has got to really focus on winning first and second down tonight. they got to gang tackle him. If he gets loose and gets going, they're going to be hard to stop. Let's face it, this isn't a normal Trojans football team. They lost five games in a row throughout the middle of the season, but early on, they won a big game early on to start the year against Prior Lake, bounced back with a win last week. And the, and the one common theme in that is Keaton Heidi was the quarterback, the junior quarterback, broke his foot in the first game, came back now last game, and they got another W. Their offense struggled tremendously throughout the season without him. Well, one thing you see, whether it's fourth grade youth football all the way up to the NFL with Aaron Rodgers going out, when you lose a good quarterback, it it's devastating to your whole football team. That's your identity. That's your confidence. He's got a really strong arm. I was watching him warm up here for the last half hour. He throws a beautiful ball. You can tell his whole team exudes confidence when he's in the lineup. And, they, you know, getting that win against Prior Lake, who's gone on to have some big wins this year, that's a huge win. And, of course, last week they beat Egan pretty handily. So they're coming in tonight believing that they're a different football team than that lost those five games in a row. And, again, they're, they're a perennial powerhouse. If they can get a win, tonight against one of their rivals they're going to have that confidence that momentum going into the playoffs and no one's going to want to see them either a win here tonight would solidify a middle spot in their in their section because of the fact they played such a tough schedule so tonight a huge game for the trojans likewise for the crimson it's going to be a great one and we're going to kick it off next on ccx What makes your community feel like home? Is it knowing what's happening in your neighborhood or when people know your name? Connections make us a community. For more than 30 years, Northwest Community Television has connected citizens, neighbors, even sports fans through video. As life gets busier than ever, we will still offer you a connected community experience through CCX Media so you can stay connected to the place you call home. All right, you're looking live now at Wyzetta High School Field where the Trojans on senior night here, the final game of the regular season, are ready to kick off to the Maple Grove Crimson. Two and five Trojans, four and three Crimson. Both teams looking for their first district victory. Each team, zero and three coming in with losses to Eden Prairie, Minnetonka, and Edina. Three of the top teams in all of the state of Minnesota. On this Wednesday night, I can remember a lot of MEA weekends 
Joe, where the weather was in the 20s and 30s. They got a beautiful night, a little windy out there, but you couldn't ask for anything better than high school football. Miles Johnson to kick off for the Trojans. Start things off here, as Ryan said, on MEA week. That's why we're playing on a Saturday night. Or sorry, it was Wednesday night. Saturday in my world, I guess. And this is a deep kick as Johnson's gonna kick it through the end zone for a touchback. And we're now gonna check in with a third member of our crew, Allie Arles. Hey Joe, you talked about it in the open. This has been a transition year for Wyzetta under first year head coach Lambert Brown, who says the biggest adversity they've faced so far this season has been injuries. The first and worst coming at the starting quarterback position in Keaton Heidi in the very first game of the season, he broke his left foot. Now that break was so bad, it required surgery. He's got screws and plates in there that have kept him out the entire season until last week. He returned, Wyzetta got their second win of the season. Coach Brown says that has breathed a huge sigh of relief into the team, but the injuries didn't stop there. Over Throughout the season, 10 different offensive players have been injured at any given time, which is ironic because there hasn't been a single injury on defense for this team so far this year. But he says this is a great time tonight. It's senior year or senior night, and he says most of his guys are back. So they've got good feelings about this one. So it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. All right, thanks, Allie. On first down and 10, Evan Hull took it left side for a gain of about four yards. You see his versatility too, Joe. He can run up the middle, he's strong, he's thick, but he's also got the speed to get outside around the edge. On second down, they give it to the fullback, first back through on the I formation. And it's Justin Stolp on the carry. Stolp picks up just a couple, bringing up third down and about four. Well, a nice hole there. You could see that there was Beautifully well blocked, but a nice job by Wyzetta collapsing on that run from the outside. They closed down that hole. And this is that third and four, third and five. These are always difficult uh, down and distances for a defense because you really can run anything in your playbook. And it's also such a big down because defense, you want to get that three and out, get the ball started and get it back to your offense. On third down, they'll pitch it right side. And... Mm. Maple Grove does not appear to have the first down. Mm -hmm. Needed to get up to that 30-yard line and got to about the 29 and a half as Hull did not have a lot of running room, put his head down and tried to get through. Well, I thought Hull should have kept it outside there. There was a lot of, you saw a lot of green there. If he would have kept that outside, I think he would have easily had the first down and maybe even some more. Tried to cut back and a nice job of pursuit there by the Trojan defense. And it's going to set up uh, fourth and about a yard here. And it looks like they're keeping their offense on the field. This could be a big play here if Wyzetta is able to get off the field. This is where, too, you got to watch for a, you know, a hard count, try to jump off sides. Curtis Haugen gets under center, and they give it to Hall left side. He gets hit in the backfield, spins forward, though, and I think that second or third effort, yep. Ryan, got the first down. Yeah, great penetration there. You saw a lot of blue in the backfield, and Hall, that's what you teach your running backs. Keep those feet moving. It's second, third efforts, and that time he did a nice job. Look at the contact right there in the backfield. He spun once, and the second spin there able to propel him forward. And that's where if you're a defender, you got to wrap up, Joe. you got to drive them backwards. They had the initial contact and just unable to, to bring them down. Great effort to get the first down. Well, Coach Matt Lombardi on his old turf where he yep. won so many football games as a defensive coordinator goes aggressive offensively here on fourth down at his own 30. Now, Haugen out of the play action fake, rolling to his left, gets away from some pressure. He's going to tuck it and run, and he gets back to the line of scrimmage, if not losing half a yard as... He looked downfield, but he's under a little bit too much pressure. There's a flag holding behind the play, and this one will march the Crimson back. Yeah, that's always a tough th ask of your quarterback. A right-handed quarterback, you roll him out to the left, and that's a hard, hard throw. He tucks it in. He makes the right play. Just really well defense there. You know, and Hagen, 51 for 120 on the year, so he's not a very overly accurate passer. 759 yards, four touchdowns, but that last number, that seven interceptions, that's what you worry about when you're the head coach. Throw it away at that time, smart play. He didn't try to make too much happen, just tucked it in, but the holding penalty is gonna get them. Well, seven interceptions in seven games, of course. And that's just uh, not a good number. No, and my math is telling me that's one per game. <laughs> <laughs> that's the Eden Prairie math. Handoff goes left side there. Hull kind of takes it, cuts it to the outside. A pretty big pickup. He had a long ways to go though, as that was a 
First down and 29 as that holding occurred way in the backfield. It was, I was going to say, if you're wondering why it's such a long penalty, it's 10 yards from where the hold occurred, and it was deep in the backfield. But again, you can see how using that speed, he just got like a bowling ball, gets outside, and he picks up about 9, 10 of those yards back. And it's again, they're getting initial uh, contact on him, but he's just fighting through. There's a good look at Coach Lombardi. In his seventh season already, man, it just seems like he's still a new coach at, at Maple Grove. He was such a, uh, a defensive stalwart here at Wyzetta for so long when they made their state champion runs and coached a lot of great defensive players uh, here at Wyzetta. So it's always got to be fun for him coming back. Out of the shotgun, now Hogan with two receivers to the right, one to the left, and he's got a single back in the backfield. Back to pass on second down and long. Looking across the middle, and it actually goes to the left palm of the defensive back who was on the coverage. Keegan and Nickel. incomplete. Nickel can't yep. come up with that interception. Yeah, nice coverage there, too. You never let, as a free safety, you never want to let anyone get behind you. Great coverage. Thing here, there was, if you look, there's two Maple Grove receivers in the exact same area. And that's easier for a defensive back there. Nice coverage underneath. The ball was forced to go over the top, and Nickel almost came up with an Odell Beckham-like interception. Well played. Well, that 19-yard holding penalty has the Crimson in a tough spot here. Third down and 21 from where they started this drive at their own 20-yard line. Hagen fakes to the fullback, gives to Hull, and Hull's going to take it. He's got some running room across the 30, gets hit at the 32, goes down at the 34-yard line. Still seven yards shy of a first down. And you can see, watch this cut inside and then still able to get the ball to the outside. Really well played by the defensive end and a nice pursuit job. And that's again, when, when it's 21 yards to go, you'll give up 10, 15 yards. You just can't give that big play up. But if you're Maple Grove, I think you gotta be pleased with how you're able to run the football. And if you're Wyzetta, you're getting the ball back in the hands of your offense. You can't start much better than that. Hopefully here with some pretty good field position. Crimson on to pump, punt rather, Beninga back to receive and Maple Grove will just down the football there at the Wyzetta 30, 38 yard line. That's what the Trojans will take over and we'll see their offense, an offense that struggled for large parts of the 2017 season, but kind of tried to put some things together last week. Yeah, put up 41 points on, against Egan last week. They only averaged 13.7 per game, so that was, that was a pretty, remarkable uh, outpour of offense. But again, getting Keaton Heide back, you know, you can see his numbers, accurate passer, 472 yards, three touchdowns. And again, he's got a really strong arm. I expect them to, to go right away to the passing game. Uh, Heide cleared the backfield there, sent the running back in motion, rolled to his right and fired one incomplete. Ryan mentioned it in the pregame, and I noticed it as well. He's got a live arm. That ball zips out of his hand. No question about that. 6'3", 185 pound yeah. junior too. He's got the prototypical college size quarterback. He does, he's got real length. I thought he was 6'4", 6 6'5", 6 when I was down standing on the field next to him. But you know, you wanna get your quarterback, he's only a junior, really his third start of the year, makes him easy throws. It's a lot like basketball where you just see the ball go in, you wanna see a couple easy completions. And all of a sudden then you can maybe take shots, uh, you know, later, earlier down the field. That handoff goes to Cockerell, Deshaun Cockerell, the running back for the Trojans. And he only picks up about a yard and a half. We'll give him a long yard and that'll bring up third down and nine. And you can see, was that a head coach Lambert Brown in his first year? And you, can, you know, you see, we saw Coach Lombardi, you know, former Wyzetta coach and, and Lambert Brown used to work at uh, Maple Grove as well. And that ball probably should have been intercepted. Heidi. Throws it right through the hands of the defensive back, Jake Hansen. Hansen would love to have that one back. Hansen had a pick six on his mind. Couldn't come up with the interception. Yeah, Jake Hansen, outside linebacker. He's their leading tackler. And I saw him working on that, Joe, in warm-ups of getting depth, trying to get in the passing lane of those quick outs. He was in a perfect spot. And uh, sometimes, too, you get your eyes big, you start looking ahead of you, and you just take your eyes off for one second, you drop that ball. Otherwise, that, that could have been... A pick six, no question. So the Crimson hold the Trojans to one yard on the opening possession. Why is that a back to punt now? And that's Miles Johnson. This is a live ball as it goes off the Crimson into the end zone. Oh, the referee disagrees. Why is it a celebrating a touchdown? But I in high school football, I think there's a rule you can't on a muff. 
punt, you, you might not be able to. It? You might be able not be able to return. If it's a fumble, it might be different. A muff punt. I think the ball's down well, where you recover. Well, it'll be good to see the replay, Joe, because I couldn't tell if there was even contact made from the Maple Grove receiver. It looked like he just flat out missed it. We got the best camera people in the business here. A nice high punt. You can see a fair oh, catch called. Oh, he doesn't touch it, does he? Wow, oh, I don't know. Liam Boy, Arbiter. He reacted. He ran down. But... That's tough to see. It looks like he just missed it, but maybe that got his fingertips. It's really hard to see. Here's a nice slow-mo. Hmm. Uh, you really can't tell. He, he gets up to his feet quickly to get after that football. And he, nonetheless, it'll be wise. That a football at the 16-yard line. Now, Heidi on the run there. He'll take a sack as he decided not to throw that one away. Probably should have got rid of it. Gets chased down by Alex Steinberg. Steinberg gets credit for the sack there. Yeah, and a nice job. They ran a little play action there. And again, rolling out to your left. And Steinberg just not letting, no place to go. Does a nice job of pursuit. That's defense alignment. Love that. Their eyes get all big when they're close to that sack. He did a nice job of closing that down and bringing the big quarterback down. Loss of five on that play. Now Heidi out of the shotgun. He's got two receivers to his right, one to his left. Cole curl the lone back in the backfield. You can see getting the play call from the sideline. So they get into the formation and the coaches see what they, what kind of defense is going on and then they can get the play call in at that point. Justin Stolt shoots through there and makes an excellent tackle yep. on Cole curl. Cole curl had nowhere to go once Stolp read that play. Yeah, you can see number six inside linebacker, Justin Stolp. Nice job reading his cue, reads his guard, senses right away that it's a run play, able to get over the top of the block and nowhere to go gain a zero you know and this is where YZ you get a big turnover you completely switch the side of the field you got to get something positive out of this drive you got to try to get in the end zone Heidi with three receivers to his left one to his right he's looking left now under all kinds of pressure he's a good 15 yards behind the line of scrimmage right now and he's not looking down the field anymore he's going to run this one all the way Gets back to the line of scrimmage and across it for a gain of about five, maybe six yards. Joe, he ran about 70 yards <laughs> on that play. A nice job avoiding pressure there. Here he goes to the left. And this is where with more experience, he's got to have his eyes downfield right there. He, he gave oh, up on throwing the ball. You know what I mean? Early, a lot of times, yeah. you know, defensive backs can't hold that coverage. And that's where if you get your eyes down the field, maybe you can make a throw at that point. You could tell right away he was going to try to run that. But uh, either way, it's going to set up a pretty long field goal here, about a 30, 31-yard field goal. Miles Johnson on to attempt this 30-yarder from saw, the left hash. I saw him making 35, 40-yarders in the pregame, so he definitely has the leg strength to get it there. Uh, Heidi's the holder. He gets it down. Johnson kicks it right to the upper Ooh. That was <laughs> – we saw that on our, our, our screen here. That, that looked like it was wide. Definitely had the, the distance, but it, it certainly looked like it, it missed the left. See that again? Well, let's take a second look here. Johnson from the left hash. The, of the uprights. Here we go. Maybe it was already Maybe it was through. over. Yeah, that was, either way, it was close. <laughs> well, hey, great job by Wyzetta. You get a turnover and, you know, still sputtering a little bit on offense, but you get three points. You always want to get that first score in. And Miles Johnson has had a really nice game so far. He had a nice kickoff for a, a touchback, and then there booted the 30-yard field goal. Had plenty of legs. He's well. also the punter that caused the fumble, right? You know, they, the, they need to find a way to get him involved in every <laughs> aspect of the of the football game. He's, Everything Johnson's touched so far has turned to gold for the Trojans. They have a three nothing lead. Yeah, Trying to say kick here, huh? Yeah. Johnson, keep Brian Johnson. <laughs> if you're Maple Grove right now, you just get the ball. Nothing fancy, just get back to running the game. You know, something has to give. Maple Grove averages 200 yards on the ground. Wyzetta's defense gives up 164 yards on the ground. So you think uh, Maple Grove here would just get back to ground and pound. Crimson had only given up six points in the first quarter all year long. They've up three now against the Trojans. Johnson kicks this one into the end zone for a touchback once again. Yep, automatic touchback in high school football if the player once the ball touches the end zone, or if the player is in the end zone uh, that receives it. You know, and I, I think that's such a, a potent weapon for a team because how many times in high school football do you see great athletes make kickoff returns, right? And if, if nothing else, you switch the field position, you get to midfield to, to be able to bury them and have, have the offense start at the 20-yard line. That's a, a really nice weapon to have for Wyzetta. 
Absolutely. Now Hogan and the Crimson, who really shot themselves in the foot, their only stoppage on the last drive was the fact they got a 19-yard holding penalty. As Hull takes it off tackle oh, left really? side, gets taken down after a three-yard game. Well, Nickel, who we, who we see earlier in coverage, that time came up from the safety position, made a really nice tackle. He went low. And against a really good running back, he can't tackle up high. Watch him come low on that one. That's a great tackle. And that's what YZ is going to need. Their front seven is, is pretty good, but they're going to need those back two or three guys to come up and be run defenders. That was a nice job by Nickel. Again, Maple Grove comes out with the eye formation. And they give it to a, one of the split backs, kind of a wide out inside reverse play there type. Yeah, almost kind of like a, a, counter. a counter. Yeah, everything's going left and Joe Raymond, Raymond coming back to the right. He's their second leading rusher, 140 yards on the year. Also one of their leading tacklers on defense. He's just a great athlete. Joe. Kind of that change of pace too, Joe. He's got the speed. You can see his cutback. And again, pretty well defended by Wyzetta. So it brings up a short third down situation for this Crimson offense that's over two on third down so far in this game. They give it to Hull. And he's going to pick up the first down and a couple more as he gets a gain of five, maybe six yards there. And the Crimson are able to move the chains yeah. for the second time tonight. Well, he's getting three, four yards before contact. So the really nice job by that front front uh, offensive line there by Maple Grove. I'd like to see Hall keep that ball outside. Again, I thought he had some more room if he would have kept going outside. And said cuts it back, picks up about five or six on that and, and a nice first down. Hogan under center with one receiver to each side. They're going to move one of the receivers into the backfield now. As Kobe Abbott moves over. And they give it off tackle. A little bit of a change up there as Hull not in the game there. They give it off to Jake Hansen. Hansen comes in and carries that ball for a gain of one. And again, Jake Hansen, one of their best defenders, leading tackler, has some good speed. I thought what Wyzetta did really nice there is they set that edge, Joe. There was nowhere to go outside. You can see how well this is defended right there. And again, you see Nickel, just nowhere to go. And then there's great pursuit. Look, you see four or five blue jerseys coming in to make that tackle. Excellent job by that uh, exterior defense there by Wyzetta. You know, and you saw Evan Hall on the sideline resting. He's got quite a workload, 188 carries coming into this game. I mean, he's getting close to 25 carries per game. So he has been an absolute workhorse for this Crimson offense. Lombardi and the Crimson will take a timeout here on a second down and nine. 338 so to go in my the question, quarter. Joe, is if Maple Grove does win a state championship, would this, the trophy be called the Lombardi trophy? <laughs> for that year. <laughs> You win five and you might be able to call the Lombardi Trophy. Yeah. If his name, if he's, it should be maybe called the Grant Trophy yeah. at some point, right? Absolutely. At some point we might have, it might be the, the Grant Trophy. He's trying to add another one again this year and once again has another great team. Yeah, they got a heck of a team and we talked, you know, in the, in the opening just about how tough this, the scheduling is in this district. But tonight Eden Prairie playing number two again in Edina. And I think all those teams are, are going to be better off. Even if you lose a couple extra games during the season, get playoff time, you're going to have a lot of confidence because you know you've played the played the best. On second and nine, Hogan back to pass, throws an out right there, a little bit too far ahead of Dylan Dugan. Falls incomplete. Hogan opens up this game over two. Yeah, that's a dangerous pass. When that one's going out, the, you know, in the short flat, you can see it hung in the air a lot. That's where these outside linebackers can get in front of that. And in, on a short one like that, Joe, if that's a, if that's intercepted, it's it's off to the races for a pick six. So you got to be real careful. Um, on second down and long like that, they've been running so successfully. I, I, I'm questioning whether or not they wanted to get five, six yards. I would have to imagine they're going to give it to Hall here. On third and nine, Hoggins back to pass again, looking left. He's got an open receiver, and he has a first down. He's able to connect on the left side with Joe Raymond, who had a carry earlier in the game. That's the first reception of the game. 14-yard pickup and a crimson first down. And that was a nice-looking ball by Hoggins. That last pass hung in the air. Watch him plant, step in, nice spiral, and right on the money. Easy catch, uh, catch for Raymond, and a nice route. I like the easiness of that. And a big first down. That gives your quarterback a lot of confidence. That gives your whole offense a lot of confidence. 
when you move the chain on third and long with a nice pass play. Hall gets the carry on first down and picks up a couple of yards and the Crimson are across midfield for the first time here tonight. Just picked up their second first down in this drive and nice response to what Wyzetta was able to do by putting three points on the board as Crimson with a good looking drive here to start off yeah, this possession. Nice tackle too by Trevor Palesh there for Wyzetta. The middle linebacker, they're gonna get lots of uh, tackling opportunities tonight. Trying to stop this running game. But I, I'll tell you, you know, especially for Curtis Hagen, the more successful Maple Grove is at running the ball on first and second down, it's gonna open up their play action. There will be some passing opportunities to be had. Play action fake, rolling to his right, throwing it out there and connecting. I believe it's Stolp out of the backfield, the fullback with that reception. Stolp's gonna pick up a first down, picks up eight yards. Yeah, and again, there's that play action, right? The play we've seen when they've run Evan Hall about four or five times a night to the left, just fake it. Beautiful pass fake and just another easy route, easy catch and throw, rolling to your right. And now you got a defense guessing when you can be balanced and mix in the pass along with the run. That's when it's really hard to defend. And, and so far, Maple Grove here, this second drive, the second possession has done a nice job of that. So Haugen now two for four with those back-to-back -back completions. Haugen back to pass again. Dumps it off, nice little reception off to Raymond. Raymond with his second grab of the game. Second grab of this drive now, and now they're all the way down to the 34-yard line of the Trojans. Yep. And what I like, again, just easy throws. Quick three-step, quick out there. Joe Raymond, their best athlete, they get, find a way to get him the ball. And again, you're just building confidence in Curtis Haugen. The other thing you're doing too, Joe, is you're softening up that defense. This defense now is gonna start looking for, for pass, and that's now when Maple Grove, I bet, will get back to the power running game. Official timeout with an equipment malfunction in the middle of the field off. To go get that fixed will be linebacker Caleb Eugene. Uh, he's their leading tackler for the Trojans on the air. On second down, they go to Hull. Again, he kind of keeps it right inside the end there. He, he likes to cut it up rather than cut it out. And I think, like, to your point right there, if he goes to the outside a little more, it's one-on-one. -on -one. Have some confidence, beat that guy, and yep. you've got, you got a big pickup, maybe. He puts his head down and just takes a couple rather than go for the big play. You know what I like, too, about Maple Grove is that Matt Lombardi, and it's very similar to what Eden Prairie does, too. He finds his best athletes, whether they're defense or offense, he finds a way to get them the ball and we could get them playmakers. And again, you're seeing Evan Hall, Joel Raymond, a lot of these guys who are their best athletes just find way, different ways to get them the ball. And this time it's Stolt right up the gut. Takes it from the 33 all the way down to the 26. Nice pickup. Seven yards on a third down play gets it to the fullback. And again, the Crimson move the chains. Fourth first down of this possession now. And that's a quick trap right up the A gap, right next between the center and the guard. That's why I always love having a fullback, whether you're out of the eye or a wing formation, because you always have that threat of that quick trap. They hit it quick, looked like they surprised Wyzetta with that, and there was really no contact till he was five, six yards down the field. And a drive that started at the Maple Grove 20 yard line. They're all the way down now to the Wyzetta 26. They'll pitch it to Hull. Hull gets a good block from Stolp, and there he is getting into the secondary for the first time, kind of untouched. He got through that first layer and gets very close to a first down. And the other thing you're seeing, a lot of white jerseys down the field blocking. You see number 65, Alex Carlson, down the field. Number 86, their tight end, Ben Schroeder, down the field blocking. And again, no contact till he was, you know, at the first down yard marker. And Hall doesn't knows how to finish a run. That's how you finish it off. You see him lower that shoulder, power forward for a couple extra yards. Maple Grove really having a nice balanced drive here running and throwing the football. I know, drive without any huge plays either. Five first downs are just yeah. kind of systematically marching down the field at this point. And also being able to operate on third down has been a big put. Now here comes a reverse. Hall gives it to the wide out. And he is taking it wide to the outside. Can't get to the outside as Hansen gets caught by the Trojan defenders who read that reverse all the way. Yeah, Dalton sees the defensive back number 14. Nice job staying home. They've run that sweep a bunch. You see a bunch of blue jerseys. You see number 25 in there as well. Cade Siriaka staying home and just nowhere to go. Nice discipline by the Trojan defense. 
Well, the Crimson right now are going to head to the sidelines and let time wind out here in the first quarter. We'll take a break and we'll see how this drive ends up. It's Wyzetta 3, Crimson 0 with Maple Grove driving here after the first quarter. Most of my family, they never graduated high school or even let alone go to college, so I'm trying to break that barrier. Every day after work, went straight to school, studied hard, and, and it paid off. <laughs> I could not have done it alone. I see the future is really bright for me. The high school diploma is just added to the confidence, and now I feel unstoppable. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Maple Grove trailing by three points after one quarter and entering the second quarter, trying to put some points on the board themselves. Big second down play upcoming here. It'll be second down and eight. Yeah, and look for something out of the, the end of the quarter there, out of the timeout. This is a lot of times where offenses might try some trickery or play action here, see if you can get a pass down the field. Hogan rolling to his left, looking across the middle. And he connects. That's always a dangerous throw when you roll to your left and throw across the middle of the field. But he found an open receiver there in the middle of that defense and Eric Christensen. And he went up and got that too. Beautiful throw, nice catch too. That's just trusting your wide receiver. It's close enough to get a measurement and it's a good time for us to go down there and check with Allie Arlt who has an injury update for us. Allie. Hey guys, I saw number 42 for YZ, a linebacker, Kalem Eugene, was just carted off the field. I didn't see what the exact injury was, but I will keep an eye out for his return and update you when I know further. Allie, thank you very much. Measurement wow. comes out here on this. That's a big loss because that, Eugene is the, is the Trojan leading tackler on the year. 49 tackles coming in, plays linebacker, and against a stout running game, you need all your linebackers to be healthy and available. Well, the weird thing about that is we saw the referee ask him to leave the leave the field. Like it looked like it was almost an equipment issue, but interesting. I don't know what would have happened there. Well, sometimes Unless he came it, back out and got hurt on a sub subsequent know, and Not play. to speculate, but that's a great job by that referee, especially with head injuries now. Yeah, you see be. a lot of players try to hide that and maybe he noticed something different and got him out of the game and it could move. be under the concussion protocol yeah, we'll too, certainly hope everything's okay they pull it tight here and it's gonna be third down uh, third and inches this is again this is one of those kind of you got trap available you got power running game but this is also a great time to run a, a bootleg or a play action out of it Third down and inches. Hogan under center. And they give it to the fullback right up the gut. Touchdown. Crimson are saying it's a touchdown and the officials agree. Touchdown for the Crimson. And what a drive that was. 80 yard drive, taking up almost six minutes a clock. Well, when you're on the road playing a rival, that's exactly the kind of drive, a sustained drive. They got a couple of third down conversions, completed a bunch of passes on that, ran play action. They were able to successfully run the football. Again, no explosive plays, but just a nice five, six, seven yards of play. Excellent drive. The extra point was good. A kind of a line drive, different ball flight, but it did go through, and it gives the Crimson a 7-3 lead here on the road. Seven to three, Crimson, what a response that was. They kind of gifted Wyzetta three points, and they bounced back with a nice, strong possession right there. You get third and inches, they run that quick trap, and just nice power football. And Justin Stolp uses those big legs and just barrels through. Look at big number 74 leading the way, JT Owasaka. Tight end out in front, too. That's just some good power football. That's Matt Lombardi to a T right there. You know, really, that's been Maple Grove's offense this year. They've, you know, last year, the last couple of years with Brad Davison and, and, you know, more explosive plays, long, long runs, long explosive pass plays. 
this year just no superstars, but they got really good skill players. They got a really good running back in Evan Hall, who's not necessarily a home run hitter on every play, but uh, you know you can see they mix it just enough. They got Hoggin going with some confidence too, and really looked accurate on that drive. And, you know, gained some big yards uh, all through the passing game. Well, we've both covered Lombardi through the years, and one of the most impressive things I come away with every year is he really adjusts to the roster that he has. Yep, and, and, does, and does a really great job of finding some way to win football games. Yep. You know, there was a time where he never had a star quarterback, and then he got one, and he changed his yes. offense, you know? And that's great coaching, right? You know, how many times do you have coaches that say, oh, we're playing my system no matter, you know? The great coaches, you do. You adapt to the kind of talent you have. And the other thing I love is, is he's not afraid to, to tailor it to his, to his best players, his best athletes. He puts his best athletes at safety, outside linebacker. They're the ones making all the tackles. Joe Raymond, for example, and then he gets them in on offense, and when they come in on offense, they're usually the ones making plays. What, I, what he did for Wyzetta, what I really liked, was he used to he used to find kind of like a monster back guy who he'd find a way to kind of take him out of the blocking scheme of the defense, let him roam, and just make plays. Yep. On first down and 10, Keaton Heidi trying to get the Trojans offense going now out of the shotgun, play action fake, looking downfield. Finally finds an open receiver, but he's barely open. I mean, there's three Crimson defenders right in the area, and he snuck it into the perfect window for a nice pickup on first down. Yeah, Charles Engdahl, nice catch, number six. But I'll tell you, that was interesting from a couple perspectives. One, not one person on the Maple Grove defense was in a, in a three-point stance. Everyone was standing. Number two, that was you, we talked about his arm strength, you know, for Keaton there, and you could see it rolling on the right. That ball had some zip on it. Heidi gets his first completion of the game, and then what happens? Why well, goes backwards on second down? A loss of two yards as the Crimson shot across the line of scrimmage. Um, Justin Stolp, who we saw score a touchdown, watch him get into the backfield here. Just a nice form tackle, good penetration. And Wyzetta, I mean, on the year, only averaging you know 100 yards per game rushing, so not a power rushing game. And now you put in third and long, and you know Maple Grove is going to be coming with some some type of blitzing. That time they looked like they were a little too eager, maybe jumped off sides. Really the second penalty of the game coming up here. Yep. On that previous carry, it was Christian Vassar. Well, that's a huge penalty. Joe, instead of third and six, you're gonna have, what about third, third and, no, that's gonna give him a first give down. Give him the first yeah. down, how about that? It that's was third, a big play. Yeah, third and five, and you shoot across and get off sides. Those are the kind of penalties that drive a coach nuts, too, and it's a, you know, gives you an automatic first down. You got, why is that? You got all the momentum on Maple Grove. You could maybe pin them here with some good field position. You give them a first down. The first first down of the game comes via a penalty for the Trojans. Now Heidi, under pressure, gets taken down from the backside. Great looking sack from Jake Hansen, who got through on the defense. Yeah, he's a linebacker. He came from the, the quarterback's blind side, and that's, again, part experience, part not having played a whole lot. That's when Heidi's just got to be able to feel that pressure. He sees him coming, and you got you to gotta get rid of that. Throw it away or take a shot down the field, but you can't keep going backwards. That's going to set up a second and really long. You can see the pressure, kind of the different defensive formations that Lomb Coach Lombardi has uh, the Crimson in. Second and 14 after that four yard loss. Heidi passes after the play action fake and throws that one incomplete. Tried to connect with Ian Hamlin. And that'll bring up third down and long. As Heidi's now one for four. And you see Jake Hansen, who we saw have a sack that time in coverage. And a nice play action. Again, I, I can hardly see the ball coming out of Heidi's hands. You can see his arm strength. And just right through the hands of his receiver there. You got third and long. You know you're going to be getting some pressure. This is where a draw or a screen play could really be huge. There you go. Everybody in the two-point stance again. Heidi back to pass. They set up the screen. And not able to hold on to the football. There was Joshua Hara. I think that was Excuse Christian Vassar. Vassar, yeah. yep. Vassar, yep, sorry. Nice motion going to the left. They had it set up here. You know, if he's able to catch that and cut to the middle there, there was there was quite a bit of room there. Beautiful play call 
And that's just execution. That's a couple of drop passes there on that uh, offensive possession. Well, this Crimson defense has given up three points, but really they really haven't given it up. It was yep. the special teams on the on the muff punt, and they gave up a first down, and that was on an offside. So they've been pretty sturdy here tonight for the Crimson. The good news for Wyzetta, you got Miles Johnson oh, oh, in the game. Miles Johnson, though, just oh. as you say it, puts the ball on the turf, finally does recover it. But Maple Grove is going to take wow. over at the five-yard line of Wyzetta. You know, and, and a lot of these mistakes for Wyzetta right now, they're self-inflicted, right? Drop passes. That was a good snap right in the hands. Miles just dropped it there. You know, excellent effort by his part just to get on that. Otherwise, that could have been a touchdown. But it, either way, that's going to set up Maple Grove, A, with all the momentum, Joe, and B, excellent field position. You know, in, in this MEA football game week, usually the weather plays a huge role. It is not playing a role here tonight. It is beautiful. There's no reason for the mishandling of that. Football. No, it wasn't a high snap either. Perfect snap. And sometimes you, as a punter, you just, you, just like a receiver, you rush, you get your eyes up down the field, you see the pressure coming. You got to focus, you got to keep it in your hands, you got to get the punt off. Hogan comes out, and first down and goal from the five, and it's an easy entrance into the end zone for Evan Hall. His ninth rushing touchdown on the air, and that was really nicely. Nice design play, all the power, all the motion was on the left side of the line of scrimmage. They ran to the right, and there you could see his quick feet, nice cutback, and really well blocked. He's able to just walk into the end zone. And that's what you want to do on offense. You get a turnover, you get a short field, you want to punch it in right away. Nice job by the Crimson offense. And another screamer through the uprights to make this. A 14-3 lead for Maple Grove as the Crimson in their last two plays have been touchdown runs. Evan Hall has taken another look. Yeah, and again, really well blocked. Nice job on the offensive line. JT Osaka, number 74, got the nice kick out. And again, untouched. I mean, you can't ask for anything more as a running back. Just a nice cutback. And again, you can just see Evan Hall's just got that nice combination of size and speed and strength, too. And then this is where Wyzetta, I think their struggle this year is they don't have an identity on offense, right? You, every team, you know, when things get tough, you want to have something that you can hang your hat on. And maybe we run the football, that's what we do. Or we throw the football, that's what we do. You know, right now you can see they don't have an identity. They don't really trust anything on offense. You know, if you're thinking where, where's, where can they go offensively, the pass game hasn't been there. The run game certainly hasn't been there. You know, and that's when sometimes you try to do too much, and that's when turnovers compound themselves and things can spiral down. If you're if you're Wyzetta right now, you need a big drive and got to get some points on the on the board here to turn the, the, the momentum. Coach Lambert Brown had told Allie and I before the game about the patchwork they've done on that offensive line. It's just been a new offensive line each and every week, and if, if you're a Viking fan from last year, you know that's no <laughs> yeah. recipe for success. They've had injuries. Uh, there's an onside kick for the Crimson. Wow. They see a hole in the Wyzetta special teams, and it's an easy recovery as that ball was perfectly placed just beyond the 50-yard line. It has to go 10 yards. They recovered it 12 yards into it. Coach Lombardi and the Crimson caught the Trojans napping. Yeah, and that's such a hard kick, too, because you, you have a tendency, a lot of times kickers won't kick at 10 yards. It doesn't go hard enough. That ball was perfectly kicked. And the other thing that's difficult, these guys that are running down, they have a tendency to want to grab it before it goes 10 yards. Watch this thing, just wait, 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 boom. As soon as it goes 10 yards, they recover it. Oh, and they're starting off at the 45. Yeah. Did you see that? They don't, I thought usually you have your front line 10 yards off the kick, but they they start, they kind of cheat yeah. a little bit. You know, and that's something that's film work, right? Maple Grove probably seen that. Why Zeta maybe plays a little bit deeper and that was a false start. You saw some offensive line moving there on the left side. Maple Grove with their second, third penalty rather of the night. Well, and I think Andy Peterson, number 17, is the one that recovered it. He recovered his own kick. And that's preparation, that's execution. You know, and that's one of those things too, maybe Coach Lombardi, I don't know if he calls that or if he gives his kicker autonomy to say, hey, if you see this, go for it. But either way, big big time play call if it was, and number two, most importantly, big time execution. You know, the, this game right here, Lombardi plays it off, and we didn't talk much about it here tonight, but this is a big game for him. I mean, 
there was once upon a time it's, he was the guy that was supposed to take over for Brad Anderson when Brad Anderson went away, and this was supposed to be his job in waiting. And I think he wants to put up a pretty big number tonight, and that's a that's kind of a he's here to coach tonight. I, I think that's a Lombardi call all the way, right? I do, and I, and I think anytime he comes back here to Wyzetta, you know, he's. I don't think it's a you know a, a, a mean spirited thing, but you want to represent where you came from. You want to show them, you know, hey, maybe in some in the back of your mind that you made a mistake. This is what you, you missed have. out on. Yeah. But with that being said, I know Coach Lombardi. He's he's had a big. I mean, Maple Grove is a huge school now. They're a power in many many sports, so they really, you know, I don't think he could be happier at the school and the location that he's at. You can see the the way he the defense has been coached up here tonight too, and they the defense has been really getting after the YZ offense with some different blitzing schemes. And right now, they're using an offensive timeout. Well, he works with the linebackers specifically, and I, and what I love how they do on defense. Next time YZ has the ball, we'll we'll point it out. But they move their players around. Linebackers are in A gaps, B gaps are coming from the outside, and that's tough to coach against because. You don't know when, when they're coming, when they're not. And the other thing you do is really good coaches, Joe, they self-scout. And so they want to, you don't want to give away what you're doing. So sometimes they look like they're coming, they're not going to come. Other times they are, and they just keep an offense guessing, especially Wyzetta with a makeshift offensive line that you and Allie had talked about. I mean, that's, that's hard for these guys that are playing together really for the first or second time all season to pick up. On second down and 14, Hagen rolling to his right. Throws downfield, and that pass gets deflected, then maybe caught, but out of bounds. No, nope, ball fell incomplete. Nice job defensively getting in the passing lanes there. Matthew Otto, number 31, did a really nice job as a linebacker. Watch him get depth. And just barely gets his hand up. That's an excellent play. That's a tough throw where you got to get it high enough to get over the linebackers, but you can't float it too much where the secondary can come in and make an interception. So a nice play call. Now you got third and really long. You know, and this is where as a defense, you got to really stay home, watch out for reverses, trick plays, flea flickers, any of those kinds of things. You'll give up five, 10 yards here, but you can't give up a big play. Joe Raymond checks back in on offense. He's lined up on the bottom of your screen. Two receivers to each side, Hogan back to pass. Now he's looking towards Raymond and oh, he, he just him. overthrew him. Raymond had oh. his guy beat, that ball just Maybe a yard or two over his head. You know, even though that was incomplete, that's why is that a, that you 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 gotta you can't let a guy get behind you on third and you know 18 or whatever fourth and third and 15. You can't let that happen. Even though that didn't get executed, it was there. And that's where as a quarterback, Hogan probably got big eyes. You get a little bit of adrenaline, give your receiver a chance to make that play because Joe Raymond had him beat by a couple steps. So the Trojans defense recovers from the. Onside kick recovery from Maple Grove. The Maple Grove can't make that short field pay off. Wow, that was a heck That's of a, a punt. Big leg there from punter Andy Peterson. Peterson kicked that one over 50 yards into the end zone, and we're going to go back down to Alley. Yeah, guys, we talked about Caleb Eugene being carted off the field earlier. He is back. He has an ankle that is taped. And you're talking about that injury prior. He just had some blood on his shin, but it looks like the blood is fine. He just had to have an ankle tape, but he is back out and playing. There we go. Thanks, Allie. It's a positive report for Trojan fans. As Wyzetta will take over at their own 20-yard line. Down 14-3 to and kind of a must-do-something possession I would think at least get that ball back to midfield and getting back in the field position back see if you can't put points in the ball. And first down they give the ball to Vassar who takes it right side for a gain of two. Andrew Cranny number 11 with a really nice head. I, th I found this to be really interesting Joe as we you know looking at these two teams you know Wyzetta first third and fourth quarter have almost been dead even with their opponents however in the second quarter they've been outscored 112 to 20 on the year and so this second quarter they've struggled to to really get momentum and, and some big plays and so far this game's representing that trend as well heidi throws that one a little bit behind his intended receiver and that was billy revere who he was looking for on second down and eight. another incomplete pass heidi having a tough game so far one of six for seven yards passing that time it didn't look like he got set and plant off his back foot it looked like he was for, fading backwards and he missed a, just a little bit behind there. And Revere is a big target, six foot four, 
235 pounds. That's where you got to give him a chance to make that play because he's he's a load to bring down. On third down and eight or nine, they're going to send the running back in motion. Heidi's going to roll to his left, then throw back to his right for a screen. But sniffing it out and eating that play alive was Eric Christensen. I think there was a fumble as well. Heads up play by number 51, Ishmael Chesson there to recover that. But really well defended. That's a, that's a nice play call too. Roll into the right, throw back to the left. So you see number 14 and number 20, that'd be Liam Arbitreiter and Eric Christensen just staying home and just nowhere to go. Really well defense. You see well, the ball gets ripped out, that yeah. Ball there, yeah. That's a big recovery. Otherwise, you're giving Maple Grove another really short field again. Got to love the play of when you already have them wrapped up to go for that football yep. as well. And that's so. that's something you work on every day in practice from fall until now is getting that ball. Ooh, another drop, too. Oh, and a block. Yeah. Punt. Can the Crimson scoop and score? They do. <laughs> the scoop and score from Joe Raymond. <laughs> Scoring in another way, the Crimson on the board again. You know how hard and athletic that is to pick that up and then be able to run into it. That's just a heck of a play by Joe Raymond. And I'll tell you what, Miles Johnson had another drop. He caught that ball and just fumbled it just for a half a second, just long enough for that rush to get home. Get another good snap, there's the drop ball. And really well blocked too. I think that was number four, Jake Hansen that got the block. And Joe Raymond picks it up and scores. Wow. Boy, how do we go from anointing Miles Johnson as the special teams player of the week in the first yeah. quarter to <laughs> well, I jinxed him when I said second hey. quarter, but my goodness. Ever since I said, as long as he's in the game, good thing. And then it was it's been all downhill since then. Wow. And really nothing with his leg. It's just a matter of hanging on hanging to the, the football. football. Yeah. Ryan Iverson jinx. That was a little bit better looking extra point there. Yep, that was pretty one through the uprights. Getting right in his hands, just drops it. And that's that's how you block a punt too. A nice job by by Hansen there, getting both hands up. And again, another special teams gaffe on the punt. And you can see Mile, you know, not hanging his head about it. That's sometimes you can get a little bit of the yips, right? Where it gets in your head. Just a simple catch like that. So and you, you wonder, Joe, is that's going to play a role? You know, if Wyzetta gets fourth and manageable, will they just go for it? Uh, it's it's 21 to 3, and, you know, only four minutes and, what, 17 seconds ago of, of actual football time, it was 3 nothing Wyzetta. Yeah. I mean, that's, this has all happened well, pretty quick. And again, for whatever reason, this second quarter, was it was it three nothing at the end of the first quarter? Yeah, yeah. so twenty one nothing here in the second quarter. Is the second quarter, the one that is why is that the team that's jinxed in the yeah, second quarter? Yeah, one hundred and twelve to twenty. Yeah, on you the mentioned air. it in yeah. the pregame or, or before the pregame. I mean, that's and part of the, just the brilliance that I you know the research. The second that, quarter has just been that I have here, but yeah, second quarter's just been rough. And now if you're Wyzetta, you can't hang your head. You've got to get something positive here on offense. They're gonna fake the reverse, and here comes Billy Bjork. He breaks a tackle, oh, can't keep broom. his feet. As Bjork could have kept his feet at that 25-yard line, he's gonna, he was going to have some running room. All right, let's see if Wyzetta can get something going here, down 21-3. to three. Well, I like that idea, a little fake reverse. And you can see he's got blockers out in front. Again, Maple Grove staying home, but he, if he could have just kept those feet going, he had some more space in front of him. But either way, nice return out to the 26. You know, this is where, if I'm Wyzetta here, you got a big, strong quarterback with a big arm. You take a shot down the field. We've seen a lot of these quick throws. You know, I, they got some good size, some good speed at the receiver here. Utilize your quarterback's strength, in, which is his arm strength. Try to take a shot down the field. And he sends one in motion, handles the high snap, and look at the penetration of the backfield. Nowhere to go for Kokoro. That's uh, Justin Stolp, number 34. He's in the backfield before the, the, the running back even hit, gets the ball. You saw a high snap there, kind of threw the timing off. You know, that's just that's just great, great football. And he's coming in unblocked there off the edge. Unofficially, I have Wyzetta with negative one yards rushing right now, Ryan. Seven yards yeah. passing. And you're not going to win a lot of games not being able to run the football, more so in high school than at any other level. You've got to be able to consistently run the football. 
My stats aren't perfect up here, but I got the wise that it was six yards of total offense. Coker, and it's the same, not the line of scrimmage here. Same thing, Christensen, number 20, coming off the, the edge again. They're unblocked, and it's such a slow developing run that they're, they're, they're getting contact two, three yards back in the backfield. And not a traditional or stereotypical large offensive line for YZ. You know, for years and years, they would have a, a one or two Division One recruits on the offensive line. This year, kind of looking to and see. Always if they had can, really good running backs too, yeah. able to to really pound the ball on the on the on the ground. But what you do now, you got third and long, so you you put your quarterback in a passing situation, and you got a defense that's ready to tee off on it. Corporal runs left. He has some running room here. Oh, oh, and he gets caught from the backside, taken down hard at the 30-yard line. <laughs> that was a heck of a tackle. Nine there, defensive line. It looked like there was some room here. Watch number nine keep going. He doesn't quit on the play. He grabs him right there and just throws him down. That's a heck of a play. And that's, you teach your kids, you never stop. Even if you're behind the play, you're always trailing the football and you sprint till you hear that whistle. Number one, you can make the tackle like in that case. But number two, the ball could go on the ground and you want to be there. So just a great motor there. Great defensive stop. And again, the momentum, high school football is such a game of momentum, Joe. And right now it's all on the crimson side. Wyzetta needs to get a play here to get some of that momentum back. Let's see if it's Miles Johnson back to punt again. It was, and a fair catch this time received properly. Yeah, most of that, and most of the went, action has been on punts. And it wasn't Miles Johnson who, well, let me, the numbers are so hard to see here sometimes. They actually went with a different punter there. Just to I think they went with Reed Sanders that time, number 16. And just kind of forced it, forced their hand a little bit. Sanders gets a good job just getting the, yep. catching that football and getting that punt out there. And uh, poor Miles, just as you said, kind of case of the yips there, just had a hard time handling that ball. Well, the first three punts that Wyzetta had, we saw Maple Grove drop it, and Wyzetta get excellent field position. The other two were, were one was blocked for a touchdown, the other one was dropped. I saw the craftiness from Hall there as he a nice little cutback against the grain. Allowed him to get upfield and pick up six yards on that carry. You know, even plays that don't look like they're much, it looks like YZ is winning. You end up looking and like that one, for example, I didn't think he got more than a yard or two and here he ended up getting six, right? If you get six yards on first down, you know, you're, you're gonna sustain quite a few drives because it gives your offense such a great chance to convert. Maple Grove went three and out on its last possession, trying to fix that here. As they give it to Hull, kind of a deep back in the eye there. He only picks up a yard. Once he got to that hole, he was met by a host of Trojans. They'll bring up a third down in a short situation. Well, nice job, too. You love this defense coming up, making plays. Again, you see number 42, Caleb Eugene, back on the field, as Ali said, and he was in on that tackle. And again, nice job. Good job by the defensive line. Linebackers are right there. And that's what you need. Your big defensive line, we got to got to eat up some of that offensive line so you free your linebackers up so they can just run to the ball and make plays. Raymond checked into the game. Hull checks out. Raymond will be the deep back in the backfield behind Stolp in the I formation. One receiver to the right on third down. Going to give it to Raymond. And Raymond, a second effort gets forward, but the ball might be on the ground. Wyzetta claims to have it. The officials get in there and clean things out. Raymond does fumble and Wyzetta does recover. On third down, it looked like Raymond was gonna have a first down, but instead it's Wyzetta football after the turnover. Yeah, and there's Nickel in on the recovery. And a nice, just a power running game. Let's see if we can see when that ball gets out. Looks like Nickel right there just took it away. And you see him recover and that was a nice play. We've seen a couple of strips here tonight. Very heads up by the defense trying to rip that ball out. And what would have been a first down on a short field for Maple Grove, instead, Nickel comes up with the strip and the recovery. And maybe that's the spark that can get this Trojan offense what they need here to get a big play going offensively. Well, Isaiah with great field position at their 41. Keegan Nickel, only a junior with that great play here on senior night. And it's a quarterback keeper there as Heidi runs left there and he's taken down 
by Joe Raymond. Raymond kind of takes some of his anger out after that fumble <laughs> on that tackle. Well, I like that they're running that little run pass option that time, and Heidi that time keeps it, and it was open. And uh, excellent tackle by Raymond. And he, he's feeling that too, because Heidi's not, not a little quarterback. He's got some good size to him. Had a nice gain of four yards there on first down. Heidi back up. Pistol formation. Has an open receiver, but his receiver could not make the catch for him. It's a good looking throw. Yep. The catch just wasn't there as Ingdahl couldn't make that catch. Ingdahl's his top yep. receiver. And uh, Heidi took quite a hit, I think, as well after this throw. Take a look. You know, just a little bit high where the ball's got to come down. That's a dangerous ball. It gets tipped like that. You see a lot of times those are picked off. But, you know, Engdahl, he's got some good height, too. He's six foot five. You know, and that's where, as a receiver, you got to help your quarterback out, too. Not every throw is going to be perfect. you got to make some tougher catches like that. Get your quarterback some confidence. And Lombardi runs onto the field and takes his final timeout. This will be the last Maple Grove timeout. Saw something he didn't like here on third down. Maybe saw formation or some action that he hadn't, hadn't prepared for. And, you know, you look at 322 left, 21 to three. It's certainly this game, a lot of time left. You know, that's this game is not over by any stretch. So I think he's sensing, hey, if we can get a stop here, maybe get the ball back to our offense with two and a half, three minutes left to go. Maybe we can get one more score before halftime. Maple Grove last week was in a tight game against Edina. That game got away from the Crimson late. Hornets prevailed. Crimson thought they played Eden Prairie tough for a few quarters, yep. couldn't hang on to the fourth. So they've, they've been there with some of the big dogs this year. It's hard to really call it a disappointing season when your only three losses are to the three juggernauts in your division. But uh, a win here tonight would make it, I think, a solid regular season. And then we'll see what the yep. playoffs happen. I mean. It's a brand new season, as we all know. No, they were up 17 to seven at half to Edina. And then you beat, uh, you know, Prior Lake earlier in the year. Prior Lake just beat Lakeville North. So, I mean. Hogan escapes some pressure, gets forward, spins oh, across he, midfield, he, he, he and he gets close. very close to a first down. He got probably close enough yep. to warrant maybe going for it here on fourth down. That's just all effort that time. Excellent job just fighting to try to get that first down for his team. Last game of the year, nothing to lose. You're down by 18. Punting game hasn't looked too strong the last couple of times out. Let's see if they can get it on fourth yep. down. Now out of the pistol formation on fourth down though. Three receivers to his left. They have a timeout to burn, so they might try to see if they can draw him off sides here too and then make a real call. This is where that, that run option here where he might be able to hand it off or keep it. That's what I would look for on fourth and short. Here they go. Croakwell, all oh. kinds of penetration. He's still on his feet though, and oh, there's nowhere man. to go. Boy, they just blew up the middle of that play. I mean, there was two crimson in the back before Croakwell even gets his football. Look at look at the white jerseys pushing the offensive How about line the, back. The, the nose tackle there. Yep. Uh, that, that was a fantastic push from Ben Bristol up the middle. Yep. And Cockrell, I mean, that's a fantastic effort to you know just to avoid getting tackled right away. But you, you got to give your running back a little bit of a chance. I, I'm I'm really old school, and I go on this rant every once in a while. But I, fourth down in, in inches. Or Quarterback I, sneak. I, Why are you going on the, the shotgun? shotgun. Yeah, I can't I, stand I that. Because exactly what just happened, Joe. You allow defensive penetration. Yeah. If you go under center, especially with a big quarterback, yeah. just lean forward. You run a you, you run a quarterback down. sneak, and the yeah. worst case scenario is they're going to actually measure, and you might get or not yeah. get it. You no, know. I couldn't agree more. Put it on I, the spotter. I don't, I don't like the shotgun out of those short down and distances either. All right, so here come the Crimson. Hagen delivers a strike downfield. It gets knocked away, but Hagen took quite a hit there at the end of that throw, too. And uh, nice toss downfield. Had a receiver, but a better defensive play as Christensen couldn't come down with it. Yeah, what I love, too, I couldn't tell the number for Wyzetta, but that was timed really well. Watch the leap here by the defensive back. Trying to make a play on the ball. That's just excellent defense. That's excellent coverage. Really couldn't throw a, a better football, either. And again, out of play action. I like taking the shot. 232, short field. Clock stops after a first down as well. So you got plenty of time here. You don't need to get huge plays to try to get a score. Nice tackle. Now they give it to Hall on the ground there. And 
He picks up just about a yard, maybe two. They get number 24, Nickel, for Wyzetta in on the play. I've been really impressed with him defensively. We've seen a couple of pass breakups. We've seen him come up, make some great tackles. He got the, the fumble, the strip, and the recovery last time. He's had a heck of a first half for Wyzetta. That's Chad Smith you're looking at there. But, you know, uh, Maple Grove, now 15 carries for Evan Hall. How about that in the first half? Well, he's their workhorse. Again, 188 carries coming into the game. Hogan back to pass. Tries to fire one across the middle there. There's some yep. that yep. pass interference. It, yep. The hard thing is that's probably not even a catchable football, but there was definitely some pass interference. They're going to get number 11, Andrew Cranny. Now, pass interference in high school is a different rule. It's not an automatic first down. And there, there looked to be some contact before the ball arrived there, no question about it. So it's 10 yards from the spot, but that it still will be will a be first, a first down, down yep. because it was third down and nine. But like your point, if it was third and 15, yep. it might not be a first down or it wouldn't be a first down. But so that, that's a huge that's a huge play, Joe. Is that his Rather first than fourth penalty. and long here, now you got a first down you know, from within inside the 30 here. And plenty of time, so you still got the whole playbook for Maple Grove. You can run, you can pass, you can do a little of everything. Oh, ball's on the All ground. Oh, the ball's on the ground. Stolp never had it, I don't think. I think Wyzetta recovered that. They tried to give it to the fullback up the middle, but Stolp, I don't think, ever had it. And they put it on the turf, and Wyzetta will get the ball back here at least one more time in the first half. Yeah, and that's so frustrating for Coach Lombardi, right? That's just an easy quarterback running back exchange. And a nice job by Eugene on the recovery. Yeah, you're right. He'd never even had it. Oh, this. You know, those are those are the kind of exchanges you do hundreds of them every day. It's a weird second <laughs> quarter, right? I mean, punters not being able to handle the snaps. You got multiple fumbles. You got Maple Grove fumbling two balls back to back here. Wyzetta really struggling to move the football on offense. Kind of a sloppier. Second quarter it's here. Not a, it's not a week eight type of game where you you know you have your ducks in a row and you're ready to go to the playoffs. Uh -oh. You gotta be careful. If Wyzetta's gonna throw the ball downfield, this is where Maple Grove is gonna be expecting pass. On, Heidi throws to the left side yeah. there, and that one was behind his target. And sniffing that one out and was Jake Hansen. Hansen wanted that one back. He, he's had a couple of near yeah. pick sixes here tonight. But you gotta watch for Jake Hansen. You also gotta watch Joe Raymond, number 21. He's he's their leading interceptor on the year and again when when a defense knows you're going to be throwing it and they got good athletes in the secondary and that linebacker they're going to be reading that quarterback's eyes and they're going to be jumping all over it this is where you combat that with maybe a, a two a stutter you know a, a fake and go see if you can play on the defense's over aggressiveness and, and make them pay for it Vassar takes this to the left yeah. side and he has nowhere to go how good has Jake Hansen been on defense, <laughs> number four? Just again, holding that edge, getting off the block and making the play. And you get, all you see is white jerseys over there. There's just nowhere to go for Wyzetta. Loss of six on that carry. You know, this is this is where I think Coach Lombardi wishes he had a timeout left. Because you could stop the clock here and, and get the ball on a really short field. And, and if nothing else, make Wyzetta punt where they've had some issues tonight. You can see an unbalanced formation here on the right side. Third down and long. Heidi back to pass, looking for his receiver and just overthrows yep. his intended target. You know, I like that play call. You take a shot down the field. If worst that comes to worst, it's intercepted. It's like a good punt. And you give your best playmaker and Charles Engdahl a chance to make a play and maybe get a home run out of it. The, the flip side is it does stop the clock with 46 seconds left, fourth and long, so they're gonna have to punt again. That's the one thing, I mean, yeah, you say like the call. Uh, the good thing is what Maple Grove hasn't shown to have that big strike ability yet either. They've yep. they've scored you know, on a long, sustained 80 yard drive, then they got a gimme where they got the ball. But what do you have to lose, right? So I, I agree now. You I, stop I, the clock, you're right. Maple Grove is gonna have the chance here to get the ball but they back. But, but they, haven't, they haven't shown that ability to yep. really have, you know, bite off the big one. All right, clean punt. Up in the air and a fair catch called for as Maple Grove will take over in great field position but with not much time left as Lean Arbrader grabbed that one. But you're right, if Flyzetta runs that, that's the last play of the first half. 
you know, at least now you, you got a chance. Maple Grove, again, 39 seconds. They don't have to necessarily throw the ball down the field. If they get a good run, get a first down, get out of bounds, they got a chance to get quite a few plays off here as the clock does stop after they get a first down. Maple Grove's last two possessions have ended with fumbles, though, from both Stolp and Raymond. All going back to pass, throws to the right. Wide open receiver right there. That's Raymond. He takes... Jumps forward, gets a first down, then bounces out of bounds. Or he maybe, thought he had the first down there, because the spot's gonna be a little bit short. Yep, nice, easy, quick throw. And you can see Raymond, I love Raymond. Look, he looks for contact. He ain't going out of bounds. <laughs> He's trying to look for that contact. You love a football player like that. Clock stops as well, second and inches. So either way, you get a first down, the clock stops. This is where sometimes you can go up to the line with two plays called, right? This play and then the next play. They throw it again out to the right side, and again it's Ray, no, that's not Raymond, excuse me, on the far side there. I think that was Christensen, wasn't it? Christensen gets the, yep, right. Christensen gets the first down reception, gets inside the 30, down to the 27. And again, nice, easy throw. They see the defensive backs for Wyzetta are playing, you know, good eight to 10 yards off, not wanting to give up anything deep. And Maple Grove taking advantage of that. They'll take eight to 10 yards, get out of bounds, 30 seconds left, they have plenty of time yet still to try to get into the end zone. Christensen's first catch of the night. Logging back to pass, going down to the end zone, he's got Raymond! And Raymond's in for a touchdown! Three plays and they are in. That's a really well executed drive. You get two short passes out of bounds. That time they run Raymond right up the right sideline and just no help from the safety. That's an easy pass and catch and Joe Raymond's got his third touchdown of the game. Beautiful throw. And you know, and that's where you can see number 25, Cade Siriaka, defensive back. He's gotta come over and make a play on that. He's late getting there and just a nice throw. And you've seen Curtis Hagen make some really nice throws here tonight, get into a nice rhythm as well. Seven for 12 for 80 yards and a touchdown now for the quarterback, Curtis Haugen. So that's where I go back, Joe. They should have ran the <laughs> they ball. They should have ran the ball. <laughs> <laughs> just going to halftime down 21 to three and. No, just a beautiful throw. Haugen makes a great and, throw. Yep. And a good reaction. Yep. And I'll tell you, Maple Grove, you know, coming into this game, averaging 108 yards passing per game, you know, they've had a really nice mix of run and pass here tonight. Actually done almost more damage in the passing game in a couple of nice short plays. They got nine yards, they got 10 yards, got out of bounds. It looked like they're just gonna kind of dink and dunk their way and then they take the shot to Joe Raymond. He's had a heck of a first half. That time he's shown off his receiving ability, goes up, makes a nice play, gets both feet in, excellent throw and catch. You know, I think if you're Coach Lombardi right now, you're up 28 to three, but you're a little mad about how your team has played, right? You, you, you muffed a punt. They, they could have put a, they could have put up a huge number. Yeah, in, in you had a couple of fumbles on a short field. So I mean, they I mean, scored 28 this quarter, and they literally could have scored 35 yep, or 42. Yep, there's no question. It could be 42 to three right now. But 28 three, especially with your defense's ability against this Trojan offense, I think you got to feel pretty good about where you're at. We need to get a sports psychologist though in on this, what happened in the second quarter for Los <laughs> here. I mean, that stat is scary. On the kick return, here comes the Trojans across the 25, down at the 30 yard line on that return. From Luke Getz. 15 seconds left to go. Why is it, I believe, has a couple of, all three timeouts in their arsenal. Yeah, here's a little return, and Luke gets the reverse there. Gets the reverse, got it. And nice speed, you can see. They didn't fool anybody on that. It's hard to do that reverse in such a short field. But, you know, I think if you're Wyzette at this point, do you just hand it off here and get into halftime? Or do you try to take a shot down the field? What do you got to lose? I'm not gonna leave the play calling up to you. It resulted in negative seven points. <laughs> First and 10. Same Coke roll in motion. Back to pass. Heidi completes his second pass of the day. Now the question is, do you take a timeout here? No. <laughs> no, you don't. So they'll take the six-yard gain and then they'll go into halftime trailing 28 to 3 in a second quarter where they were outscored by the Crimson 28 to 0. Well, they've, they've done a nice job, Wyzetta has. 
this year of coming back in the second half. So maybe they're going to talk it over at halftime, adjust a little bit. You know, and you're not necessarily playing for this game, but you're playing, Joe, to get ready for the playoffs. So can you make a couple of subtle changes, get your offense a little bit of rhythm, get your quarterback some confidence, maybe make a couple of big plays so you get that confidence going into the playoffs. That's what you're looking for in the second half. Let's go downstairs with Allie Arlt. Not quite ready for Allie yet. We'll give her a few moments, but this is always a tough job for Allie too. If you have to interview the the Wyzetta coach right now, you know when you're down 28-3. Well, and she's wearing a, a black hat. We got to get her a fluorescent yellow hat so these coaches can find her in the crowd, in the masses. But now Looks like we, she tracked Coach Lombardi down. We do have Allie. She's standing by with Coach Lombardi. Allie, take it away. Thanks, Joe. All right, Coach, let's first talk about that onside kick that really worked out in your favor. What was the decision to go for that there? Um, we just had momentum. We didn't take advantage of it. We didn't score after it. But, but yeah, it was when you're up a score, we wanted to get to a three-score lead, so we thought it was a good time to do it, and we executed it well. I was disappointed in the offense after it, but we did a good job. Yeah, that offense having some ball security issues. How do you tighten that up in the second? Um, get them new hands, I guess. I don't know. We, we've worked on it over and over again. And so um, it's something we just got to concentrate on and we, we can't hurt ourselves. That, that's something we've been doing all year and we just got to get better at it. What have you seen the guys do well that you've liked so far though? I'm happy with our D. I think our D's flying around and creating havoc and, and, um, and creating things for our offense. Our offense has to do a better job taking advantage of it. It was a good touchdown at the end of the half though to get us up to 28-3. And so we did some good things, but it wasn't a perfect half by any means. Thanks for your time, Coach. Hey, thank you. All right, there you have it. Kind of like we thought, Ryan. Yep. A good half, but not a perfect half, and that's what coaches are always searching for, well, that perfect perfect game, right? Great coaches, Joe, are attention to detail. That's what they are. And, and you know, you heard them say, can we get them new hands? It's something they've struggled with all year. And, again, it's something you work on every single day, just taking care of the football. So you love a game like this, Joe, because, number one, you're going to win, so you got a lot of good things. But you also can keep your team's attention because there's been enough mistakes where they got to correct those things. And, you know, again, Maple Grove, you know, four and three coming into this game, they're, no one's going to want to see them in the playoffs. They, you know, if they get the right kind of matchups and they play well, you see their defense is capable of really holding offenses down. I, I just think they're a dangerous team come playoff time. It's a 28-3 lead right now for Maple Grove. We're going to take a break. We'll be back for some halftime highlights and stats. You're watching high school football here on CCX. My garden keeps the pink of my cheeks. I was very independent and thought I could take care of myself. I fell and I had to have meals on wheels. They're my savior. My name is Lola Silvestri. America, let's do lunch. Drop off a hot meal and say hello. Volunteer by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. I adopted Bento in 2010 from a shelter. As it turns out, we have very similar personalities. And this cat makes me make art because he's always motivating me to take pictures of him, to draw pictures of him. He just is motivating artistically. It's just that simple. Well, he's my best friend, but a lot of people know him as Keyboard Cat. I see you mobbing over her. Let's go. Let's mob. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Hey, yo, we mobbing. Come on, girl. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Hey, yo, let's crawl. Mm hey, -hmm. yo, let's crawl. Hey, mm -hmm. let's crawl. Mm hey, -hmm. yo, let's crawl. Mm -hmm. I rescued Toast from a shelter in 2011. I love Toast because she's a lazy diva. Toast does whatever she wants, obviously. She's sleeping right now. She's an epic snuggler. She's so comforting. She's so loving. Toast makes me laugh. <laughs> when I walked into the shelter, I knew right then that she was special.
Love is love.
I'll never forget the day our landlord called and said, read your lease. No pets allowed. My owner tells him my dog ate the lease, but that didn't work. And now I'm stuck in a shelter. But this pit bull is ready for a new crib. I'm loving, loyal, and play well with others. So don't be intimidated by all my muscles, because the biggest one I have is my heart. <laughs> That's right, I said it. In a high school, it's halftime. Well, the Crimson lead the Trojans 28 3, along with Brian Ivis, Matt Joe Moline, and Allie Arlt is trying to stay as warm as possible down on the sidelines here tonight. An interesting football game that had the Trojans up 3 0 in the first quarter. And uh, take a look at how they got there. This muffed punt right here on a fair catch attempted for by Liam Arbiter and Lysena runs it into the end zone, but the ball is actually dead right there. So Lysena ends up going three and out, basically, but then the, because when they got the ball, they were able to kick a 30-yard field goal. And uh, Miles Johnson got them on the scoreboard there. You see Evan Hall right there running the football for the Crimson. He was a big story in this first half, had a great first half. This was a big drive right here. The Crimson, after giving up those three points, they marched down the field for 80 yards and bucked it in there, getting five first downs on that drive alone. And there was Stolp, the fullback getting that touchdown. You see right there, Wyzetta struggling to handle that punt. That was Miles Johnson who had that field goal to point Wyzetta up early in the game. Mishandles that one, and the next play, Maple Grove is able to put it into the end zone for a quick two touchdown operation. Two plays, two touchdowns, as Evan Hall puts that one in. Then, Miles Johnson mishandles another one, and you see the block right there from Jake Hansen, and taking in for the touchdown is Joe Raymond special teams touchdown for the Crimson. Then, Wyzetta gets the, gives the ball back to the Crimson, and it takes three plays for Maple Grove to march down the field and score in about 28 seconds. Joe Raymond gets a 27-yard touchdown reception. He had two receptions on that possession alone. And there you see your first half stats. It's really dominant performance in that first half for Maple Grove. 89 rushing yards, 80 passing yards. You see it right there. What do you see, Ryan? Well, it's dominant. The, the, the one category that usually dictates who's going to win or lose is turnovers. You see Maple Grove with three. And I guess you could, you don't call those punts turnovers, the, the punt block yeah. and the punt drop. But those are two big plays, too. But three turnovers, and we saw Coach Lombardi just say we got to you know, sharpen that up. But other than that, defensively, I think they were just absolutely dominant. Three rushing yards allowed in the first half, pretty unbelievable. And that, and that tells you how great their defense has been, that they've been able to turn the football over three times. And it hasn't mattered and at it all. It hasn't mattered, yep. right? Yep. Interesting half. And even had an onside kick in there in that first half, too. So we saw a lot of different things in that first half. And here we are, the last game of the regular season. The other stat that I think would be really interesting is time of possession. It had to be 90% Maple Grove. Very strong in, in favor. Especially their Grove. first touchdown drive, Joe, where they, they ate up at least six, seven minutes of the of clock time. Individually, Evan Hall had 15 carries for 69 yards, and Curtis Hagen, he has 80 yards passing, including a touchdown pass in that last drive. That's your first half. Highlights and stats. The band's going to be finishing up here soon at Wyzetta, and then we'll come back for some second half action here at Wyzetta High School. You're watching high school football on CCX. Hey, did you know 2.4 million loving cats and dogs in shelters and rescues need our help to find a home? Let's go to the shelterpetproject.org and meet a few who are in a shelter near you. Harlow, Ooh, she's one great listener who loves to hear all your stories. My kind of cat. Cerulo is a sweet, goofy boy who's eager to please. Sounds just like another dog I know. So go to the shelterpetproject.org, search your local shelters and rescues, and go for a cuddle with your next best friend. Adopt. Start a story. Adopt at the shelterpetproject.org. 
When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Well, Thomas, you've got pre-diabetes. But with more exercise and a change in diet, it can be reversed. I've tried exercising. It, it just makes me hungry for bacon. I love bacon, too. And who really likes to exercise? Not me. <laughs> me neither. Nobody. <laughs> 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 mm. <laughs> so we're good? What? Oh, you still have pre-diabetes. Big time. Hart, what's going on? I'm leaving. Why? What did I do? Not enough. You constantly ignore me. You barely eat anything healthy. You're half as active as you used to be. The pressure is just too much. I quit. OK, I get it. I'll do better. Just please, don't leave. OK. But remember, if I go, you go. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Uncontrolled high blood pressure could lead to stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range before it's too late. Final week of the regular season. It's Wednesday night of MEA and the Crimson Faithful have made it out here to YZ. Watch their team off to a great start, leading 28 to three over YZ. Yeah, these Wednesday night MEA weekends are kind of fun games, right? It's no school tomorrow or Friday, and usually the student section are in a good mood, and a lot of fans go up to the cabins one last time too. So you hope you get a good turnout, and tonight pretty good turnout. You can see. It's definitely dropped about 10 or 15 degrees outside, but it's not going to slow these Crimson fans. They look like they're having a great time. Four-day weekend. It's been a big week for the Crimson. Both the girls' and boys' soccer teams are off to the state tournament after section final victories this week. And you'll have to tune into CCX Media to see which games we'll be covering. And the, our, some of our different teams are qualifying for state tournaments. And Sweet Caroline here rocking out at Wyzetta High School. Take a look at the standings now in this Metro District West. An absolutely packed powerhouse football team. Ian Furry, Minnetonka, and he died. Those three teams kind of took turns playing each other these last couple weeks, and Ian Furry came out on top. Yeah, Ian Furry, Dinah tonight should be a, a, a pretty good ball game. Dinah's physical. They got Coach Lamker from Osseo a few years ago, now the head coach, Eddie Dinah, so they're playing his his brand of football. And I really want to cover a Lamker game because when we used to cover Osseo, it was, oh, shucks, those guys over there, they got all the resources yeah. in the world. <laughs> we don't have nothing over here in Osseo. I, you can't really say that in yeah. Edina. Well, he just, he's <laughs> one of those can't guys. He's poor me card. He's one of those guys, he's always looking for an edge, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. And uh, he, he plays, he played, when he was an athlete, played with a chip on his shoulder, and coaches with a chip on his shoulder, and his players really take on the identity of him. And, you know, you get Edina kids playing with a chip on their shoulder, and they're, they're a good football team. And uh, I expect them to give Eden Perry everything they can handle. Yeah. Uh, here tonight. Wouldn't be surprised if Eden Prairie pulls that out, but it should be a close game. But, you know, you go back to 0-3, you see Maple Grove 0-3 in the in the district, but, uh, you know, again, your top three, your lonely losses are to top five schools in, in the state. So they're going to be well prepared here to play good football coming into the playoffs. Again, I said it earlier, but I would not want to see Maple Grove on my, my schedule in these first one or two rounds of the playoffs. You yeah, always love when you have a song like Sweet Caroline and the high school kids can still sing along. I mean, this is an old song and they still know it. You know, the Coach Lamker, you know, talked about being the, he playing that underdog role so well. He, you know, he, he had a great high school career, went on to play football at Augsburg too. And he, you know, in that role too, in that 
you're the small school in the MIAC with the least amount of resources and played that role well there. It's, it, it's, it's, it'll be really interesting if he turns Edina into a football powerhouse because yep. the resources are there. Yep. Give a guy like Lamcourt some resources, he can make it happen. You know, and right now in the third quarter, uh, Eden Prairie right. is leading Edina 21 to 10. Uh, we'll go down to Allie now for her interview with the coach of the Trojans. All right, coach, just 26 offensive yards in that first half, but you guys seem to be gaining a little bit of momentum. What did you like out of your team in the first? Well, you know, right now we've got to find a way to keep our own the field and get some first downs. Um, our special teams game is killing us right now. We've given, you know, we've given up um, some, some honored points and something, you know, to two drop, two drop snaps on punt, one blocked. Uh, you know, with the onside kick. So we've given them momentum. So right now, you know, we're talking to our guys about, you know, what we're doing. We gotta, we gotta find ways to play our game and not, and just go out and play and not worry about the outcome, not worry about the things that are finished to play, play the way that we can play. You have forced three turnovers. You guys have none for yourselves, but how do you spark a big play and some big drives in the second? You know, we gotta, we gotta protect up front and execute a little bit. I um, mean, we've gotta stay on the field and get first downs right now. We're, you know, if we're not getting first downs, we're not getting a lot of play calls and it's hard to, you know, call a bunch of things. So we've gotta get out there and just be able to make sure that we're, we're staying on the field um, and we're, we're keeping our defense off the field um, and then we take advantage of it. We catch the ball and make the throws that we need to. Good luck in a second, Coach. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Allie. That's, that's exactly right. They have one first down in that first half and it came from a, a Maple Grove penalty nonetheless. So, Well, the question to that, you know, to Coach Brown, and he had some great point. we got to stay on the field. we got to get first downs. Well, how are you going to be able to do that? That's the question, right? You, you can see when they've run the football, you know, Maple Grove's penetration is in the backfield before the running back even gets the ball. So you're not able to run the football. And when you can't run the football, then you got good athletes in the secondary for the Crimson. They're just waiting for that ball in the air. They're closing. They're looking for pickoffs. So it kind of goes back to what you and I talked about early in the first half, Joe, is what is their identity on offense? What can they go to? to get first downs and sustain drives. And right now, I don't know what the answer is. Yeah, it, it would have been, I think, like what he kind of mentioned, he kind of tipped his cap a little bit. And it's, you got to throw it and you got to catch it. You know, that the one thing they can do, they, they're not able to right now open up a hole. And they're not able to protect their quarterback as much as they would like. So it's got to be a quick throw and catch. Someone's going to make a play. Extend the, extend the sticks. Move the sticks one time, maybe two. Maybe loosen that defense up a little bit. Right now, Maple Grove has no reason to be on its heels at all. No, and then the other problem too against a ball hawking defense is when they know you're going to show those throws. We saw a couple of Maple Grove dropped, which could have been pick sixes too. So they're playing, their outside linebackers are getting in those passing lanes. You know, you got to be careful of that too. And, and that's where, again, I, I like the idea of just taking a couple of shots down the field, see if you can get a big play to get this crowd back in. And even if you don't win the football game, give. Give your team, give your crowd so a couple of big moments so they can really enjoy this and start building off of something positive. Andy Peterson's going to kick off for the Crimson here when we're ready to kick it off. So maybe Wyzetta will get the football to begin the second half of play. And all the kickoffs have gone, uh, you know, from our vision right to left in this game. There's been no kickoffs going left to right. Well, Wyzetta got out of that terrible funk of second quarters they've had this year, and now they're in the third quarter. Maybe that'll change everything as well. Peterson. You, can, you can see Wyzetta. They're a good 13 to 14 yards. Yeah, off the, off the line. And so you, you always got to be careful, too. And you see that big gap right in the center of the field. Peterson will get us started here in the second half with a... And that will be received at the one yard line. And it's a fake reverse as York takes it up the right side, gets across the 20 yard line up to the 24, and that's where Wazetta will begin the second half play. I think it's key too for Wazetta if they can get a couple of positive plays on first down. If they could, you know, whether it's running or throwing some quick out, if you can get five, six yards on first down, you just set your offense up for such a, a, a better predicament as opposed to we've seen a lot of lost plays on first down, second and 14, second and 15, and that's that's when Maple Grove's defense becomes dangerous because they can really get after the quarterback. On first down, Heidi comes out in the pistol formation with two, three receivers to his left. And they finally do open up a hole. Nice hole open up for Vassar, how about that? Best positive play of the game so far for Wyzetta. And it's a pickup of 13 yards. Well, Christian Vassar hit the hole hard. He had an excellent cut 
out to the right side and showing off his speed. That's by far the best run of the day. Look at that hole too, a nice job. Offensive line and a nice run as well. Vassar never saw any running room in that first half. In fact, he ran for negative six yards. He was always met in the backfield. On first down, they fake it to Vassar, quarterback keeper, and now Heidi is met with some backfield penetration. Gets away from two, but not three or four as the Crimson finally converge on him at the 33 yard line. Joe, there was five white jerseys in the backfield. That's a heck of an effort by Heidi just to get out of it. You can see fake. He makes one guy miss, somehow gets out of this, somehow gets out of this one, and there's just nowhere to go. There's another two or three white jerseys coming in to make that play. Well, Jake Hansen comes off the outside completely unblocked yeah. and reads the play. I mean, you want that to be a quarterback read situation where when he sees Hansen sees it, he actually gives it to the running back. And it's gotta be quicker too. If the quarterback is gonna keep that, he's gotta go. It, it's a little bit slower developing. Vassar gets the carry on second down, gets forward for a couple of yards, but still nowhere near the original line of scrimmage. No, Ben Bristol and Ben Paschke in on the tackle. And again, this is that third and 15, right? We talked about winning first down. You, you just put your offense in such a, a tough predicament here. You know, and they had a couple of screens that looked nice in the first half. This is a, kind of that down and distance again where, you know, sometimes screens, you run the guys deep and you come back with a screen can be effective. High snap handled well by Heidi and a hole opened up for Vassar. He's nice. got a first down, he's across midfield. Gain of 13. Uh, I think they caught Maple Grove out of sorts thinking it was gonna be a pass. And again, nice job by that offensive line, opening up a hole and Vassar, only a sophomore, showing off some nice patience and hitting that hole then hard, getting a first down. Hard count right there gets Maple Grove to jump across the line of scrimmage. So the Crimson will get its fourth penalty of the game. And this one will be a nice one for YZ, a first down of five. Great situation to be yep. in. You mentioned the sophomore Vassar. They actually have, are playing quite a few of young athletes this year for this Trojans team. Well, that's a tough thing as a Trojan fan that you maybe go through some lumps this year, right? But the positive is you're getting a lot of younger kids, some great experience so that when they come through the summer program and into the fall next year, they're gonna be that much better. Vassar gets another hole. This time running up the left side, gets it up the gut, and he's all the way down inside the 35, down to the 33 yard line, a gain of 18 yards. And I'll tell you, the biggest difference is they're getting Vassar a chance to make a play. Look at the hole that that offensive line is opening up right there. We saw first half, just such good penetration by the Crimson. There was just nowhere to go. And Coach Lombardi yeah. takes a time out. He already has seen enough. He does not like what he has seen so far from his defense. You don't want to see a team come in and pack it in after you think you've won the game after one half. Lombardi's going to give them an earful right now and talk things over. Already on this drive, Joe, more first downs and more rushing yards than they had the Trojans in all of the first half. So you got to like the way that the Trojans have come out and responded. And, you know, I like what Lambert Brown said to, to Allie there at halftime is, forget about the outcome of the game. Let's just make plays. Let's just get better. Play by play, series by series. That's that's all you can control. What's done is done. It's 28 to three. It's going to take a miraculous comeback to win the game. But we can win this series. We can win this drive. We can win this quarter. That's the mentality you have to have, especially with a young team that's learning and growing. And so far, they've really responded. First down and 10. They send one man in motion. They're going to throw it down the field. The throw and catch is just not there. There it is, time to make a play. Heidi makes a pretty good throw. Now the defense was there, but I think that throw might that's have- It's a catchable ball. Yeah, the, yeah. the throw made that's, it in. And that's Engdahl, their leading receiver. We've seen a couple of these kind of throws. Throws aren't perfect, but that ball, that ball is right in the hand. I mean, that's gotta be catch. You talk about, you know, football, what's great about it, Joe, is such a team game, right? You gotta have everyone kind of working together. And that's where these receivers, they have not helped their quarterback out at all tonight. That would have been a big play, really the biggest, most explosive play of the game for Wyzetta. Yeah, he just, he's not getting uh, the payoff for making some good throws yeah. when he does make them. On the other thing, that was out of play action. They Because they've had success running the ball, there was a nice throwing lane there. There hasn't been any lanes you know, for them, but the linebackers that time bought the play action. That's gotta be a completion. Vassar picks up three yards on 
second down. Brings up third down and seven now from the Crimson 30 yard line. Two receivers right, one left. Vassar gets the handoff. He's on the run and did a good job of getting some yep. positive yards. That looked like he was maybe going to be trapped there by Hanson. Jake Hanson, such a great tackler, but he actually got away from Hanson and got forward for a couple. Of well, that's how you finish a run. That's going to set up fourth and manageable. But how come the snaps are high on every play? It seems like it's throwing the timing off. Every time, Heidi's have to jump up and go get the snap. Big fourth down and four play here. Heidi out of the pistol. Maple Grove showing some kind of movement up front. They almost got across the line of scrimmage. You can see Lombardi yelling from the sideline, watch the ball, do not jump off sides. That would give him, why is that an automatic first down? He does have his interior lineman now in a three-point stance. Blitz coming from the outside, and he gets caught by that blitz from the outside. Just too much penetration. Off the outside there was Eric Christensen shot across. Christensen, one of those two-way players for the Crimson. I'll tell you what, the, uh, you've seen a lot tonight. Outside linebackers coming in untouched. Christensen and Jake Hansen as well. And I think because of that high snap, the play is too slow developing that you, you can't let a guy run free and get to your running back every time in the backfield. They got to get their snaps down and they got to have someone just for a second pick up those outside linebacker blitzes. Uh, you run out of the you run out of the shotgun and out of the pistol all day long. It does you no good if the snap's not perfect. Yeah. I mean, it just you got to get it throws under everything off. Yep. Some of these offenses across college football and high school football that never get under center. It just so Maple Grove takes over at their own 26. They'll run it forward for a few yards. The defense gave up some yardage. It was why well, best drive of the game. And Vosser, who who had rushed for. Negative six yards in the in the first half on that drive alone ran for 49. Yeah, I think if you're Wyzetta, you take away that you have a couple of really nice runs. You're able to finally, you know, get some good uh, rushing lanes. But again, they had a chance for a big play out of the passing game too, and they got to convert on those. Here comes Hall. He gets it right side and takes it all the way across the first down marker for a pickup. About seven yards for Maple Grove, and they'll move the sticks. Nice job that time, Hall able to, finally he takes it outside. You can see there was some definite space. He's got really good footwork. Two carries, nice first down. And your Maple Grove right now, you're, you're just thinking, let's pound this rock, let's score it, let's put a nail in the coffin here, let's go up 35 to three. This time it was Joe Raymond on the carry. Raymond has a special teams touchdown and a receiving touchdown, has a fumble running the ball. You can tell Maple Grove, you know, you talk about balance, not just running and throwing, but they have good running balance as well. Jake Hansen will get in there and get a carry. Eric Christensen may get in there and get a carry. Evan Hall obviously will get some carries. They've used the fullback. Raymond will get the carry, and then Justin Stolp as well, number 34, had the first touchdown. So they, they really got good balance. There he is again up the middle, quick trap. He put the ball on the ground yep. again. Yep. Boy, I don't think they got those new hands at halftime. Stolp fumbles, and Wyzetta's going to take over near midfield. Well, we've seen a couple of fumbles on that, that dive play with the fullback. That time it looked like Stolp actually had the ball in his possession. We've seen some quarterback exchanges where, where it looked like he never was able to get control of it. That time, I think he did have it in his possession. Ball was fumbled after he was running. Yeah, Stolp has two fumbles yeah. now. One was on the exchange, like you said. This one was because of a hit. He never reacted to try to get on his own ball. That's a little bit dis that's a little bit concerning to me. Usually, you, know, you want your running back to kind of get after the ball a little bit there. Maybe he got stung a little bit, but. I think he was frustrated with himself. On first down, Wyzetta keeps it on the ground. And again, positive yards picked up, five yard gain. I like number two, tight end Billy Revere that time. You could see him had a really nice block. You're seeing blue push now and you know, going the right direction as opposed to white jerseys surrounding the backfield. It was Coquel that time. Coquel rather on the carry. He gets back into the mix, picked up Four yards on first down. Now Kokoro gets the fake. Heidi looking downfield. He's got his open receiver, and this time he's got it. Ingdahl hangs on to this one, and he's deep inside Maple Grove territory after the biggest play of the game for the Wyzetta. 
Yeah, nice play action. They fake the handoff. Engdahl that time gets deeper than the cornerback and a really nice looking ball. Excellent job. Nice throw and catch. And that time Engdahl makes a really nice catch, but that ball was put in right on the money. And again, just being able to run the ball successfully, that brings those linebackers up, opens up everything else. Okro now gets the carry down inside the 10 yard line. Down to the five. Well, though this way, that offense looks like a completely different offense than it did in that second quarter. They're coming out, nice balance, running the ball effectively, and that running the ball is just gonna open up the passing game too. Okro ran that one for nine yards. Engdahl's reception was a 26-yarder. They're biting off big chunks here against Maple Grove. Now it's YZ using its timeout. All that momentum, you wouldn't want to slow it down, would you, Ryan? Yeah, it doesn't Second make sense. Second down to one, yeah. seems like you're just going to run the ball yeah. here. You know, and not only do you do that, but you allow a defensive coach like Matt Lombardi to get his guys together and talk a little strategy, make a couple of, of subtle changes, too. That's, that's where you just want to keep your foot on the pedal there. You got big turnover, you got a couple of nice plays out of it. Second and one, so you got everything in the playbook available. Looks like uh, Wyzena did want to do something different. They've been, you know, they, they've been spreading the field all game long. They they reached in and grabbed a tight end, I think, on this one. They, looks like one of their, their timeout might have been to all of a sudden kind of do a formation switch in a formation they haven't really used yet tonight. Looks like they're calling in tight end. John Hess. So Hess is gonna. And you can see number 42, Caleb Eugene. Yeah, they really starting the linebacker, much. putting him at fullback. So they got their big unit in. This is where you could see power football or a play action out of it. They use Hess at the H back and then they give it to Kokoro. So they brought in an H back and a fullback. And they got about two, three yards there on that second down in one play. So it's a first down. They're gonna get first down and goal here. And again, those high snaps, you're seeing Heidi have to jump up on every single play. That's where you have a little bit of communication. Hey, bring that snap down. Well, these have to literally jump on every play to get the snap. Out of the shotgun again, Kokro gets the ball up the middle, shuffles to the right side, finds some soft spot on the defense. He's laying across the goal line, but they're gonna say that he was down before he did so. Yeah, and I'd be careful too. This is where Heidi maybe keeps it, runs that little run option there. As you can see, the defense really starting to collapse on the running backs. If Heidi were able to, to, to fake that, keep it, I bet he'd be able to walk into the end goal. Fourth and goal from the inch line. And Kokro fights his way in for a touchdown. The Trojans offense puts one into the end zone for the first time here tonight. And once they got out of that second quarter, they looked like a whole different football team. Yeah, really, really, really different. We saw a nice sustained drive, their first opening possession of the second half. Ends in a punt, but then they get the turnover. And really, I thought the, the play of that drive was the play action pass. The first one all night, we saw Engdahl make a nice play down the field. On the attempt, the extra point. Oh, some contact with the kicker. There's a flag on this one as they kick it to the uprights. Maybe assessed on the uh, kickoff, but uh, why is that up? 28 to 10 trailing now. More yards on these last couple of possessions than clearly than they had in all the first half. And look at that touchdown from the Trojans. Yep, same play they've run. Get a nice job, just getting a little bit of push and some pretty good power too on that by Cockrell. See, he had some contact, kept those legs going, and dives into the end zone. What I love to see about that, you see the offensive line is pumped up. And again, that goes back to, to what Coach Brown talked about is forget the outcome of the game. Let's just live in the moment. And you can see they still got life. They're still playing hard. And to be honest, you know, 28 to 10, they're not out of this game yet, especially with the turnovers, the way Maple Grove has put the ball on the ground. Well, Maple Grove had three turnovers in the first half, but it didn't cost them. There was no points off turnovers for the Trojans. Or actually, they got three, actually. So they did get three. This time, they get seven. So every time Maple Grove puts the ball on the turf, it puts them in jeopardy, and that's four turnovers now in a game, in a game that they lead by 18 points. Bizarre, you usually don't see that type of thing. No, and really the same plays, Joe, that they ran in the first half, they just, they haven't 
they didn't get any kind of push. They're, they've been able to really be effective. And, and I think the way Maple Grove's identity is going to evolve with a quarterback like ID, who's got a strong arm, is if they can successfully run the ball, you saw play action, it, it'll work. And he's got the ability to throw the ball over the top. That was a nice drive, and that's what they got to get back to doing more of here in the second half. End up in the end zone for a touchback. And Maple Grove will take over at its 20 yard line as Johnson pounds that one. Yeah, as long as Miles Johnson doesn't have to catch the ball and just kicks in, he's got a really strong leg. Yep. We've seen a nice field goal from 30 yards. We've seen a number of touchbacks on kickoffs. And when he did punt the ball, we were able to, to grasp it. He had a beautiful punt, too. So he's he's got a really strong leg. Just got to get over that, you know, watching that ball into the hands, not dropping it. So first down for the truck, or for the Crimson, rather. Hagen under center with one back in the backfield. And it's Hall, and Hall's going to get it left side. He got some penetration. Now, we haven't seen a lot of that here tonight. Why is it getting through the line of scrimmage? Now, Michael Dugan, big time play. Number 52, defensive line, beat his block. Watch on our left side. See him beats a double team. That's just great individual effort. And Joe, this just brings me back to how big was that touchdown before the end of the half, right? Yeah. Imagine if it's 21-10. This is a lot oh. tighter of a game. Heck yeah. And it kind of comes down to that third down play where Wyzetta took that shot downfield, stopped the clock, and Maple Grove able to punch it in. But Dugan, that, that really was a tremendous individual effort. Beat a double team. Diving tackle, just great effort. Hogan rolling to his right to pass on second down. Has an open receiver and a nice catch there on the far sideline by Eric Christensen. It looks just short of the first down. Yep, nice sprint oh. out to the right. This is a deep out. They're going to give him the first down. And that's where Wyzetta, that's just too soft a coverage, right? You're giving the guy eight, ten yards. There hasn't been any really long down the field completion other than the, the touchdown pass to Raymond at the end of the half. But that's just an easy throw and catch. That ball hung in the air too, but I have a little bit tighter coverage there. First down and 10 now, Hagen. This is to the deep back hull. And hull gets to that second layer of the defense before he's finally dragged down after a gain of five yards. Well, that's a win for an offense when you can get five or six yards on, on first down. Yeah, the, the most impressive thing with Hall is, you know, even when after contact, he's able to just keep that pile moving. We haven't really seen him in the open field too much, but he doesn't, I mean, it's not like he, he's a great running back because of his speed. It looks more to be like a, a vision, and uh, he never gets blown backwards off a tackle, right? He's always kind of moving forward. Well, and that's the thing. He's a horse. He's not necessarily a big game breaker. He averages six yards per carry. He just sustains nice drives. There's a quarterback keeper. Nice play call. I'll get with multiple fakes there and then takes it on his own out around the end, and he's going to have enough for a first down as Maple Grove moves the chains for the second time on this possession. Well, Hagen really not, not known for his running. Came in with very few rushing attempts and rushing yards. You know, and that's a change from Davison last year, who was an excellent running quarterback. I think Curtis Hogan, if he's able to do, you know, mix in a few of those quarterback keepers, gives that Crimson uh, just another dimension on offense. Maple Grove getting back to their bread and butter, keeping the ball on the ground, maybe mixing in a throw or two. And they go back to Hull. Hull, nice little cut there, back into the middle of the defense. I think that was Gets Raymond, actually. For, they yeah. put at the eye back. You're right. Raymond picks up a couple. You know, and it's just a little subtle difference in Hall. You see Raymond's got a little bit more explosiveness. You can see him hit that hole a little bit quicker, not quite as physical or as big as Hall, but uh, that's a nice one-two punch there to have in the backfield. And then you mix that up too with, with the fullback Stolp. They got a three-headed uh, running machine. Second and eight, and they're gonna call Hull's number here on the Power eye formation there, just kind of going left side only for about a yard. Wise's defense has put itself in a position here to try to get off the field. It'll be third down and six. Yeah, 38, Joe Demerel for Wyzetta, another sophomore defensive lineman. Got some nice penetration. You're starting to see a little bit more blue push into that backfield. And Hall and Raymond, they're having to make a cut earlier than they were in the first half. You know, they weren't getting contact, Joe, until they were three, four, five yards down the field. 
Now you've seen that defensive line of Wyzetta getting a little bit more push. Quad receivers to the right. They're going to run a little bubble screen, and it's going to be successful. Nice call there as they got the ball in Jake Hansen's hands and got some blockers out in front of them. Again, I think they're just going to wise it. Watch it. The, I mean, that's such a soft cover. That's, they're 12 yards down the field. Got a nice double team on the outside linebacker. And there was no contact until after he was past the first down marker. I think if you're Wyzetta, you, you force Curtis Haugen, dare him to try to beat you over the top. Don't give him these easy throws. Haugen's now over 100 yards passing, 108 passing yards on the game so far on nine completions, 14 attempts. Very efficient effort here tonight from Hagen. They give it to Raymond on a counter play. He jumps over a couple of linemen to get forward for a gain of four. And you see those quick feet too in the backfield. And the more pushed by the Trojans, just Raymond does a nice job making those guys miss. Turns that into a four yard gain. Be interesting to see too if Maple Grove goes back to their fullback, Justin Stolp, who's had a you know a couple of, you know, put the ball on the ground a few times tonight, but they've had success running that quick trap. This is another one of those drives here that started at their own 20 yard line. They did this one time in the first half as well and finished off the touchdown. Now Hall, sweep right side. Takes it all the way up to that first down marker. The one thing Maple Grove's doing right here is they're they're giving themselves, they're, they're picking up first downs on second down plays, or they're giving themselves very manageable third downs. Well, it looked like Stull had the first down easily, but I think they're gonna say he went out of bounds just short of the first down. Hull, not, a, not an amazing night or anything like that, but very, a solid one with 21 carries, 90 yards. Yeah, he's gonna end up with close to 30 carries and probably well over 100 yards tonight. Tight formation there, and they give it to the deep back hull. He's got the first down. See, I like that, Joe, third and short. There's no shotgun, and you just get a quick power eye running football game. And Evan Hull has that kind of power momentum. You know he's going to move forward and give you a half a yard. I, I like the, the safetyness of, of that kind of a call on third and short. You can see they like running on that right side behind their big offensive lineman. TJ Asawika, six foot four, 270 pounds. Sorry, 6'5", 280. He's been a three-year starter for the Crimson. And they got uh, 53 to Evan Jones, the guard on that side. It's the same play they just ran, they're running again. That's their big side of their offensive line. They like going to the right side for good reason. Picked up good yards once again. That's an 11-yard oh, carry man. there for Hull. And another crimson first down, fourth first down of this drive. This is very similar to the drive they had at the end of the first quarter into the second quarter. Nothing big, just six yards, four yards, eight yards, nine yards. A lot of Evan Hall coming at you, and that's how the third quarter is gonna come to an end. And just like the first half, they did this in the first quarter and it carried over to the second. They're gonna try to do it again. We'll be back for the fourth quarter here at Wyzetta High School. Hart, what's going on? I'm leaving. Why? What did I do? Not enough. You constantly ignore me. You barely eat anything healthy. You're half as active as you used to be. The pressure is just too much. I quit. OK, I get it. I'll do better. Just please, don't leave. OK, but remember, if I go, you go. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Uncontrolled high blood pressure could lead to stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range before it's too late. Back on a beautiful Wednesday night here in Plymouth at Wysetta High School. It's first down and 10. The Crimson are driving. And they'll give it to Stolp. There he is. He got the ball again. <laughs> the trust factor. They give it to him. He doesn't pick up much, but more importantly, he secured he the football. It, yep. <laughs> you can be rest assured Coach Lombardi had a little talk with him there in between the quarters. He said, you get the ball, you two hands on that football. And they didn't get much, but it's good to see him hold on to the ball. One yard carry for the fullback, Stolp. Uh, Coach Lombardi's got a lot of these players playing both sides of the ball, and they're good athletes. He's, he is, he's riding those athletes. 
All those guys touching the ball for this offense are the same guys making all the plays on defense. Here comes Hall. What a, what a block that time by the fullback. Justin stole number 34. He was lead blocking all the way for Evan Hall and he just buried someone out of the way. That was one of those power runs where there was no contact six yards. Watch number 34 here if we can, we might be able to see the remnants right there. Just a nice kick out block. When you got wide receivers and, and other running backs six, seven yards down the field opening up holes, it's, it means you're running the ball pretty effectively. Big third down play here for the Crimson. Oh, we have some movement up front. That's going to change things. Oh, they're going to, it's a fumble actually. So the movement up front was a center mishandling the football. That, my friends, is the fifth I thought there fumble was a of the game. That looked like some, that almost looked like it had to be either offsides or a false start. Usually when the center goes on, a little early, they call it a false start. But... Oh yeah, he just snapped the ball too early there, right, huh? Oh my gosh. You, you can see the conversation going on with Hogan and his, and his center right there, just saying, hey, the, the, it was on one. You know, what's happening there? And that's 68, Alex Eel. You know, again, another play that you do 100 times in practice, quarterback center exchange. I don't know of too many teams that fumbled five times and led by 18 yep. in the fourth quarter. That's... Oh, there he is. Good play that's gonna, the play. Yeah, that's going to be Ben Paschke. He was getting pretty adamant there, and that's either going to be a, you know, a personal foul. Ben Paschke, a senior. Linebacker is Coach Lombardi is waiting for him at midfield, asking for an explanation from his senior. Yeah, unsportsmanlike conduct. It's going to be a big penalty, another first down. Same play Wyzetta's had a lot of success with. Let's see if we can see what triggered it here. He's on the ground. Boy. Yeah, you can see he I was kind of claiming was, that he was getting he tripped. was upset and felt like he got stepped on and was trying to throw the throw that players off yeah that's frustrating that's where you got to just keep your cool you know, especially as a senior a leader one of their best defensive players Bach wasn't quite set yet so on first down for the wise that they get a first down because of a crimson penalty and now are ready to go the, is that a 36? Weird movement there. That's going to be a well, starting off. Paschke's back there again, frustrating one of the offensive linemen from Wyzetta. I have to watch this thing play out. I think they got Ishmael Chesson, number 51, jumping just a little bit early. Those are the kind of plays you just can't have and you're you're trying to find your rhythm, trying to find your identity. You can see the left tackle moves a little bit. You can see there's some John going on. Nice snap again. Oh, what a hit by Pashki, but it's a play action fake. Oh, that fooled me out, Joe. I did fool me because I was keeping my eyes on Paschke and he absolutely he, lit that running back who took the fake. That was a beautiful play action and Tyrese Sayan had a beat. That's an excellent fake here. And oh, that's where you got to deliver that ball. Give your receiver a chance. He had a good four or five steps on the defender. That would have been six, Joe, if they would have been able to complete that. I couldn't see who the running back was, but he paid for that play action. Vassar, and he actually had a hard time getting up from that one. Now Vassar will get the carry. First down and, sorry, it should be second down to 15. The marker is wrong on the far side of the field, so second down. That'll bring up third down on that pickup of four yards from Vassar. Third down and 11 right now. We're under 10 minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Why is it a, if they want to get back into this game, they have to make something happen. And, well, you, and want, you wonder too, Joe, if they're in four, four down territory here. 
kind of getting entering close to midfield. If, they, if they're able to get six, seven yards right now, do you, do you go for it on fourth and short? My guess is yes. What do you got to lose? Yeah, absolutely. We play to win the game. I heard a coach say that one time. We play to win the game. A screen play there to Ingdahl. Man, he was battling. I He picked up an extra three, four yards there after contact. That's just really good effort by Ingdahl. Ingdahl's third reception of the game on a screen play right there. And I think, I think like you said, it was don't try to get the first, I mean, try to get the first down, but just get us a fourth plays. Give us, give us yep. a fourth down to medium here. That's just all effort. I mean, he's contact right there. Watch him go forward here for an extra three, four yards to really make it a fourth and manageable. And again, if you're at Maple Grove, you got to be careful you don't jump off sides. Five yards would give them about that first down. See if they go with a hard count, try to get a, a penalty. Fourth down and five. Eddie's gonna roll to his right. Blitz is picked up. He's got time. He's got a receiver. Oh, oh and he oh, can't make a Jones. play. Oh. oh my goodness, it's been that kind of night. Tyree Sion just does not make the reception. We would have had a whole brand new ball game, folks. Oh, beautiful play call. Nice job picking up the blitz. You can see. Number 45 was coming. Ben Paschke was wanted the quarterback. Good pickup by the running back. And that ball was on the money. That's where, again, your receiver, you've got to help your quarterback out. That would have gone for six. That time he gave his receiver a I chance. I can't tell if the defensive back's hand getting in there that, at the end is what broke it up, or it's just it a drop. It doesn't matter. That's no, just, that's a, just drop. a drop. It's a drop. Not only he could have caught that on the run, it would have had, uh, would have had six. You know, uh, talking to the coach before the game, Coach Brown, and you know, he didn't really. It, that's kind of what he's been pointing out is that's the kind of year it's been. They just, they just they don't quite make the play. They don't quite have the confidence. You know, they don't. Well, Lambert Brown said at half, "Hey, all we got to do is catch and throw, throw and catch." And really tonight, I mean, Keaton Heidi, his numbers aren't going to be that you know very good tonight. But there's been probably three, four, five passes that could have been caught. That one, obviously a big one yardage wise and maybe a touchdown wise, but you gotta help when you gotta, you know, he's a junior quarterback really in his third game of the year coming off that injury. You gotta help him out. Great play call, great throw. And I loved how Heidi stepped into the pocket, took the hit and, and delivered a great throw. Hogan back to pass, rolls to his left, has a receiver, but Kind of runs out of real estate over there. Eric Christensen got his right hand on it, but even if he came down with that one, he probably would have been out of bounds. So bringing up a long third down here, third down and 11. You know, I, I don't understand in high school why a lot of coaches, they'll roll their right-handed quarterback out to the left. I mean, that's a hard hard play for an NFL, a college quarterback, much, much less a high school quarterback. Maple Grove's had success with, you know, some play action, rolling out to the right. Bizetta's, you know, played pretty soft coverage. It looks like they're, you know, they're back a good seven, eight yards. See if they go with a, a quick throw. On third down, Hogan throws it underneath the coverage a little bit. They're not going to quite get the first down, but again, it's probably close enough for Maple Grove. It makes sense to go for it here. Yeah, it's going nice. to set up fourth and a half a yard. Nice job, Raymond, underneath the coverage. Fights through it. He's going to be about a, I'd say, a good half a yard to a yard short. That's going to set up that eye formation. You'll see a power, power run to the right side, is my guess. And Wyzetta hasn't been able to stop that all night long. Maple Grove fans shaking the stands a little bit. If you see your TV shaking at home, it's not an earthquake. It's it's fourth down and one here at Wyzetta. And not what you wanted to see from Maple Grove. Now, it actually looked like the defense moved first. It looked like Wyzetta entered the neutral zone prior to the false start. What'd you see, Joe? I just, I'm an offensive lineman. I always think we get blamed for everything, so. No, I think the defense, <laughs> I think they're gonna end up calling it on Maple Grove, but yeah, that's not the right call. If you watch, oh, you might have, number 67 for Maple Grove, Trent Totter. That was close. I think when it's in doubt, they, they usually go against the offense. So I take that back. That's a tough call. 
You know, and these high school referees do such a fantastic job. It's hard in real time. You can see Coach Lombardi is just not happy with his team. Interesting though, he is, you know, fourth and five, fourth and six, he's gonna end up punting it. This is where that fake punt, uh, they're known to, to run some. Peterson handles the snap, and then points it off, and Isaiah will call for the fair catch inside the 20 yard line. So Maple Grove doesn't put points on the board, but they eat up a little bit of clock and they give Isaiah some difficult field position to work with. Yeah, just overall, just much better half here, the second half for Wyzetta. Defensively, you know, they pitched a shutout here in the second half. They've they've given up some yards, some, you know, some drives, but haven't broken, you know, and, and come up with another turnover. And offensively, really, you know, like a totally different team in the second half. Absolutely. Let's see what they can do here with 728 left in the clock if they can try to make things interesting. Looks left, now back to his right, finds an open receiver. And it's a pretty good pickup on first down as Bill Re Billy Revere gets pushed out of bounds near the first down marker, Revere's first reception of the night. Yep, I love that, that's a young quarterback looking to his left. I don't know if that was by design or if he was just scanning the field, but found his check down and it, that's his big tight end. He's only a junior too, Billy Revere. With his size, you can see he's, he can run as well. That's that's going to be a nice connection next year. I think that'll really pay off for the Trojans. First down, four wise it on that first down play. Height on the run, and it's tough right there. Joe Raymond catches up to him and throws him onto the turf. That's if he's, right. he's left-handed, he can throw that away, but that's the, the tough thing about rolling your left, right? Yeah, you that's, can't, that's you can't where throw it away. Height, he's got to get rid of this right here. He's got to throw that. He's got to see, you got to have vision knowing there's nowhere to go. You throw that one away. If you could just chuck that at the, at the guy's feet even. Yep, or throw it out of bounds. You know, he's out of the pocket. There's no intentional grounding. So that's where second and 10 will live with. Now you got second and 18, a loss of eight. You just can't, can't do that. And that's just a quarterback with not a lot of experience. He'll get better and better at those kind of decisions with the more time he gets. Cockrell gets the carry on second down, picks up just about a yard or two. And again, story of the night, another long third down, staring right down at Wyzetta. Keaton Heidi, third down and 15. Two receivers to his right, one to his left. Coco goes in motion, he fakes Coco, and then he pays the price. He gets rid of that football across the middle, but he got lit up. That one's on. When he's now he is not able to get up yep. quite yet. Now he will get to his feet. That was a big hit. Justin Stolp probably letting some of his frustration. See at the top of our screen here, comes unblocked. He just delivers a, a, a hit. You, ooh, you don't like to see that when they're holding something down low. Especially he already had a broken yep. foot earlier in the year. Yep. Yeah, and it, you just. I think Keaton Heidi has got the talent. If you if they could just buy him an extra second or two to stand in there, he's got such a strong arm. That is off a good one. It's a good one. Wow. Oh, go out of bounds near the Maple Grove 35 yard line. So Pretty good job there of reversing the field position with just a really great punt from Wyzetta. And we'll go down to Allie Arlton now who has an injury update for us. Yeah, guys, you saw Keaton limping off the field there. And unfortunately, that left foot is the surgically repaired broken foot. So that's what it appears to be bothering him. I will keep an eye on what's going on and give you an update. Yeah, see, he actually has a different that. colored shoe on that left foot. I suppose you don't know which one's the different colored one. <laughs> I'll tell you, with seeing that Gordon Hayward injury last night for the Boston Celtics, and it just reminds you that, you know, all athletes, no matter what sport it is, they're putting their bodies out on the line for for competition and for sport, and you just yeah, always hope for health and recovery and happiness, but it reminds you how, how scary some of these injuries can be. Well, if you could sum up the kind of running back Evan Hull is, you could do it with that run right there. A 12-yard carry where he just kind of shifted his way for 12 yards. Yeah, you see good patience getting behind his lineman. I love that when a back gets his hand behind his lineman. That means he's waiting, he's patient, he's reading the, the block. And 
I'll tell you, Hall's got a nice cutback. He's he's had a lot of success having a, some cutbacks to the middle there. He's he's been sharp, and he's a workhorse. He's one of those that just gets stronger and stronger as the game carries on. He's got to be what 30 carries tonight. Yeah, uh, not quite to 30, but we got him at uh, 24 for yeah. 110. You know, nothing spectacular, no 60, 70 yard runs, just six yards, eight yards, nine yards, every single time. That's Jake Hansen this time, and Hansen has a positive pickup on first down. Brought down by Caleb Eugene, but that tackle came after a five yard gain from Hansen. Second down and five across midfield here. Maple Grove, for as good of a game they played in that second quarter, they would like to punch something in here because they're not probably feeling too good about themselves here in this second half. High formation. Hogan under center. Pitches it right side. It's Hanson again on the carry. He cuts it back. Well, you see that? They don't They don't try to take a wide route. Right. They're always looking for that cutback lane. I think there's something out there to be had out around the outside. Of course, they're seeing something different than I am up here. Yeah, especially with, you know, with Jake Hansen, who I think's got a little bit more speed too. You'd think if he could get to the outside, that's where maybe some more big play capabilities would, would happen. But I'll tell you what I do like though, is that all the Maple, I mean, you don't see very many runs for loss, Joe. You're seeing them finish their run. So they might not be a home run threat, but they're, they're getting positive yards on every single carry. This oh, time nice it's cut. Hall back in the game, and there it is again. That the vision and the and the kind of east-west cuts while not losing yardage. You know his cuts are very subtle. We used to call that slippery. He's slippery. slippery. Yep. Looks like there's not much there. You're going to get a clean shot. Somehow he's just slippery. Gets through there, and what looks to be a three or four yard gain ends up being seven or eight yards. He, he does a nice job. He's a he's a unique runner in that point. And again, nothing flashy. You don't see him and think. You know, wow, look at that, but he, he just consistent and he's tough. And there's not many guys in high school football you, that you can give the ball to 25, 26, 27 times a game and they get better and better as the game goes on. Well, it's funny because I don't think actually they pegged him as the lead running back coming into the year. As Raymond, who they did peg, is off to the races. And that's maybe why they thought it was gonna be Joe Raymond. In the preseason report, they said Joe Raymond was the leading running back coming into the season, and he takes that one for 37 yards. So I think that's what Joe Raymond brings to the table there is just a little bit more of that, that home run capability. And you saw that time, he gets to the outside, great speed up the sideline. And I thought maybe he was gonna step out. He's able to tightrope down that left sideline, able to get in. And that was a beautiful drive. That's exactly the kind of drive Maple Grove needed here to kind of cap this night off. So if you're Joe Raymond, you have a 27-yard touchdown reception, 37-yard touchdown run, and a scoop and score on a punt block. And what is that called in football? That's a you know hat trick in hockey. That's a trifecta. It's something the trifecta. We'll go with it. We got to get him. Now he needs a pick six on defense to kind of cap it off. That would be hitting for the cycle if he's able to get a defensive touchdown. Oh, yeah. Hey, you know, great credit. You see the big boys out in front blocking. And then right there, it's just, that's just speed. Once he gets to the outside, he just punched, He just punched his ticket from an interview with Allie after the game. Well, they're all competing for that. They like to sit down and have that interview with Allie, but it looks like Raymond's going to take over to the number one villain there. He's had a heck of a football game. I think that's the kind of... Uh, the kind of touchdown that they needed here to kind of, because I don't think they were feeling too great about their performance in the third yeah. quarter. Well, and, and again, it goes back to, you know, with Matt Lombardi, you want to win, and they're going to end up winning pretty big here, but you want your team's attention, and there's been enough mistakes here tonight where tomorrow in the film room, they're going to be able to really grab their kids' attention. Say, do not be satisfied. We might have won 35 to 10 or whatever the score might end up being, but, you know, five turnovers, how many fumbles, how many bad, you know, dropped a punt, you know, missed tackles on a couple of these drives, you know, things like that. So it's kind of almost a perfect scenario for a coach because you, you win, you win comfortably, but you also put enough on tape where you can really get a hold of your players' attention and, and make some corrections. Very short kick, something rarely seen here tonight, and then some weird whistles here. We'll see if there's a 
pre-kick penalty perhaps? I don't see any flags. It's like they weren't ready. We're gonna make them re-kick it, but there's no flag. So they oh, there's a, I think I do see a flag on the far side of the field there. So the offsides on the kicking team. Yeah. Yep, you can see the top left. Officials never are sleeping, are they? They're earning every dollar they make yep. here tonight. A lot of officials like myself might start to wander off a little mentally here, but what are you going to do when you get home tonight? You know, am I, am I going to catch that second half of the Timberwolves game? No, oh, you got to watch that offsides in the kickoff. All's fair on this one. Received by Nathan Roth. Oh, Roth. holy buckets. That's a hit. Got hit hard up the middle there as he returned that one. That's Alex Herman, number 27. That was a great, that might have been a hit of the night. That's the bottom of your screen. You're going to see number 27 come in, sheds a block on the cutback there. Boom. Yeah. That's a great tackle. Nice return, too. Good starting field position here for Wyzetta. And with three minutes left, Again, you know, I think Coach Coach Brown's telling his guys, let's build on something here. Let's see if we can put one last drive together. You're seeing a new quarterback in the game as well, number 10, Marco Lopezio. Lopezio's got some playing time already this year for Wise. That another high snap. Kokro gets the handoff, gets forward for a couple of yards. Well, of course, the quarterback injured for Wyzetta. Keaton Heidi, unfortunately, injured here tonight. Marco Lopezio will come in in some relief duty here, something yep. he's used to doing this year. Yeah, he's got a lot of playing time this year. Another junior, six foot, 175 pounds. Has a nice arm. Doesn't quite have the arm strength or the height, but uh, but very experienced and, and has been pretty accurate with the football. Oh, they oh, brought my. the house. Another injury down. That's that's just that's a, a blitz right up the A gap by Ben Paschke. Yeah, they got to block him. Yeah. They, it was a trap play to that right side, and the left guard yeah. never even saw Paschke. No. And you, you just you put your running back in a really bad position. He doesn't even have a chance to to make a move. Lucky he held on to the football. And that's just one of those that does not feel good. And Paschke, on top of it, appears to be one of those guys on the defense that the offense is having. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can he's, hear the crowd was booing, too. He, yeah. He's one of those guys you love having on your team, but you, when you go against him, you just you want to pound him. But he's a heck of a football player. He looks like he's driving everybody a little crazy tonight on Wyzetta. Goes Vassar to the left side. He gets spun around near the 45-yard line. They got to get those snaps figured out. Every Everyone is... Quarterbacks have to jump. You got to bring that down because it seems like it's throwing the timing off of of these these options. You can see the you know the center right now too is Tommy Ransom, and you can see that big almost like a club hand on the left side. But the snap is with your right hand. But I'm, you know you don't wonder if that just throws him off a little bit. And, and hats off to him for playing through that. That that can be painful and. That's a good snap. Lopezio rolls to his right and has that pass knocked down. I mean, how disruptive was that defense on that possession? They were in the backfield all You could say that long. defense or you could say Ben Paschke, number yeah, 45. Paschke was he, was, place. he was in the backfield again on that play. He's hungry. He wants he wants tackles again. Look at him get through. I mean, Maple Grove right now, you know, my, my take on their defense is they're fast. They got speed. They bring those linebackers. You know, remind me almost of a Mike Zimmer type defense where those linebackers are coming you really, you don't know what gap they're coming on, but they got great quickness, great speed, and they're just beating the offensive line right now. Why is that a Steinberg six foot four knocked down that ball? But that's where Lombardi really changed. I mean, he changed high school football about ten years ago when he started putting 185 pound guys in nose tackle here. Why is that a and offensive corners didn't know what to do about it? They'd never seen such speed up along the line of scrimmage. Well, they say speed kills, right? And it, and it really does. And, you know, there's some that believe size and power football, and, and in a lot of ways that can be dominant too. There's there's more than one way to skin a cat. There's more than one way to be a successful football program. And uh, you know, the great coaches just they they adapt to their personnel and they make it work, and they they put their best players, best playmakers, best athletes in position to be successful. And 
Coach Lombardi has done that at Maple Grove since he's been there. Victory formation now for the Trojans and Curtis Haugen. As a couple of kneels and Coach Lombardi won't show it on his face, but he's smiling here tonight. This is, this is a big victory for him. Not only because it sends his team off into the playoffs with a good victory, but he's got a history here at Wyzetta. We always talk about it every time they play. But uh, Coach Lombardi, uh, someone that Maple Grove is very happy he landed in their lap because he's really turned Maple Grove into a very strong powerhouse for the football program as well. Well, there's an old saying that sooner or, later, sooner or later, the man who wins is the man who thinks he can. And there's something about that kind of confidence. I know, you know, playing at Eden Prairie, you know, we had that confidence. And still to this day, they have this confidence. And I swear that half their games are over before it starts because teams are intimidated. And Maple Grove now, you know, year after year has been very, very good. They haven't won a championship yet, but those kids expect to be good. They expect to be, you know, to win every game. And half of half of success in life, whether it's football or basketball or something completely different, is, is really just about confidence. Well, there was a time there where, as Maple Grove was starting to build their program prior to Lombardi being on staff, where you know they would you you wouldn't even think that a game against Eaton Prairie or Minnetonka would be a close one that, that you know it was trying to beat Osseo trying to beat Champlain Park and what coach Lombardi when he came on board right off the bat he said you know that's great I want to beat Osseo yep. I want to be Champlain Park but you know what I really want to do is start beating Eden Prairie I want to be in, a, yeah I want to be in that top echelon yeah. of, of programs and, and they have been and you got to understand too it's just like a college team when you're replacing one of the best quarterbacks in the metro area player of the year last year in Brad Davis and it that's a those are big shoes to fill and they've done a nice job and Hattie Dinah on the ropes, played Eden Prairie tough for a half. You know, lost a tough one to Minnetonka as well, but they're in that second tier, they're as good as anyone around. So the Crimson come up victorious here against Wyzetta. We'll take a quick break and then we'll join Allie with some of the victorious Maple Grove Crimson. It's Maple Grove 35, Wyzetta 10. We'll be back for more. back to Wyzetta High School. What you're seeing right now is Coach Lombardi addressing his players down there, trying to get his kids fired up for playoffs. It's the second season starting next week. Coach Lombardi has, uh, you know, championships on his mind. They might not be in the best position with three losses already in the, in the regular season, but they've faced three of the best teams already. You also see a midfield of some of the Wyzetta Trojan seniors on their last home game as seniors at Wyzetta High School, we imagine we don't think they'll get a home game during the playoffs. They are out there huddling around each other as well. So kind of an emotional night for some of the Wyzetta seniors and a hopeful night for some of these Maple Grove seniors who hope that they can go rattle off some playoff victories. And one player who had a great game here tonight is Joe Raymond, three touchdowns, three different ways, the scoop and score, a touchdown reception and a touchdown carry. And he is standing by with Allie now. 
Yeah, guys, every time we cover Maple Grove, here we are with Joe Raymond because when he's on the field, he's making the big plays. Let's talk about a couple of them in the second quarter. Your teammate blocked a punt. You scooped it up, brought it to the end zone. Take uh, us through that play. Uh, it's stuff we work on all the time in practice. We just we preach on getting blocking the punts and getting it to the getting for house. Because when, when we do that, that's such a change in momentum. And, and Jake Hansen came in there and blocked that punt. As soon as I saw that, all I'm thinking is get that ball, scoop and score. It was fun to watch. And then let's bring it all the way to the fourth quarter. Just that last touchdown here for 37 yards. You guys have been waiting for that bomb to happen this game. Take us through that. Uh, we run a split side stretch. It's a, it's a play that Lombo loves to call. And I knew when he called it, I knew exactly how to happen. And the tackle and the guard, they blocked it perfectly. And the edge was there. And I was just gone. Also a big defensive guy. Your team's defense held YZ to just 26 total yards in the first half. Talk about how effective you guys are on that side of the ball. Man, well, when we can get going like that and we can like we can really shut down a team, like it really works well for us. But then you probably guys probably noticed in the third quarter we lost that intensity. And going into the playoffs is something that can't happen. We can't lose that intensity. Absolutely. You talk about the playoffs, you know, we're going to find that out tomorrow. What do you have for thoughts going into playoffs with this team kind of having this up and down season, but because your schedule was really, really tough? Yeah. No, uh, we've played everybody. We've played the best in the state now, so we're going to go in the playoffs. We're not worried about whoever they seed us against. If we get if we get a 7 seed, whatever, if we get a 2 seed, whatever. It doesn't matter who we play. We, can, we, can, we know we can go out and we can beat anyone. doesn't matter who you play. We know we'll be seeing you make big plays out there. <laughs> Thank you. All right, we'll send it back to you guys. All right, Allie, thank you very much. Joe Raymond, congratulations on a great victory here tonight, and congratulations to both teams with good regular seasons. I think Wyzit obviously wants to have a, a better finish than they had this year with a bigger chance in the playoffs. Thanks for watching tonight. For the entire crew here at CCX, including Ryan Iverson, Allie Arlt, I'm Joe Moline. Thanks for watching Football on CCX.